Your music. Five people are watching only. I know. They, so many dropped. Wow. There were 19 waiting. I know. Now there's only five? What the heck? We would have better communication with Jeff if we write letters and send them via, via mail. <laughs> we might write back. We, we might have to record this. Seriously? Yeah. There we go. Hey, I was thinking about it. Now it's buffering again. Hold on. We might be live. I think we're live. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands for luck. Okay, we're not buffering on my end. No. I think give, we're live. Give it five minutes. I think we're... Don't. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as soon as we crack open the first beer... Wow, that's a big lag. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll go with this. So, while I've got a stream up, I'm going to let you guys know how pissed off I am on my internet service provider. Okay, so this is a, an ongoing saga uh, that started, what, two months ago? Mm, I like think that? even longer than that. Probably but, even longer than that. Yeah. So my internet connection at my home has been uh, inconsistent, we'll call it, for the last two months. Um, they'll get it working and then it drops again. Then they'll get it working and then it drops again. Um, what I'm supposed to be getting is gig service down and 30 megabit up. And I pay a premium for that 30 megabit up because I enjoy streaming to all you fine folks. Um, well, some of you are fine. I don't know all of you. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so they were out right around six weeks ago or so, and they said, oh, you have some really old uh, coax cable from the mid-80s running to your house. And I said, well, that's weird because my house was built in 98. They said, well, they used some old cable off the back of a truck then. <laughs> um, so they sent a crew out. They dug me a brand new line from the cable box that's sitting in my yard, boarded under my driveway, ran it up to my house, and then ran a new line from, from that junction there up into my cable modem direct. So there's literally nothing between my, there's no splitters. There, there's nothing between my cable modem and the cable box in my front yard. Um... That solved the issue for one week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was the one week I wasn't on, yeah. and then it was a great stream. Then I come on the following week later. Right. And I, I, I've had issues streaming the last three weeks, yeah. uh, solid. Um, so they were actually just out about an hour and a half ago. Um, the guy came out and opened the cable box again, and uh, all three of the junctions that go to the split point of the cable box were all broken. And so when they replaced my line, they didn't replace those properly. And so he re-spliced all new cables for everyone. He added little uh, 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 dog tails to them uh, because they had a, a real fat connection going in. Well, when the cable box closed, it was pushing Bend, on yeah. those and bending the cable. So he put little uh, uh, dog tails on them to make them actually close. Um, so fix that into things. The brand new cable that they just had run me uh, had gotten wet at some point and was already corroded. Uh, so we had to cut that and, and put a new cap on that one as well. They get to my house. The uh, one of the lines that they ran uh, coming out of the ground and into uh, and into a little coupler, that cable was frayed and split and nicked and just in terrible condition. It's like brand new cable. Brand new. Brand new cable. Are you sure they didn't pick it off some back of the truck from the? He 80s? may have grabbed that off the back <laughs> of the truck. Uh, it no, it was RG6 cable. It was new cable, <laughs> and it was a new splice. They were new ends on it. From the back of a truck. But he used the, a crappy sli slice of cable, so he replaced that. Went up to to the inside, and they had uh, improperly terminated the the wall jack as well. So he replaced that one. So it's like, okay, at this point, I can tell you there's nothing wrong with the line from your house to the cable or to, yeah. to the to the cable box. I said, okay, good. He goes, the bad news is you're still getting a lot of noise, and it's not on this local node. Uh, so he, he unplugged all of my neighbor's connections and unplugged my connection and there was still be noise being generated from that the note, from the what? box. How? Don't know. But he goes, sometimes it's, it's a signal that's coming back and, and there's interference and whatnot. Uh, it's beyond me. So right now they have a uh, regional repair crew coming out to take a look at the neighborhood node and possibly the main trunk that goes back to their Jeez. office. Uh, so the reason people aren't complaining is TCP self-corrects itself. TCP connection self-correct. Um, and even a lot of streaming services will self-correct. YouTube will, will buffer, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Um, what happens when I'm streaming is it's a UDP stream. I'm just slinging packets at YouTube and it grabs what it can. Yeah. Which is why sometimes in my stream there will be like a 20 second drop. Um, 
I'm probably the only one experiencing problems with this particular leg. Yeah. Uh, Everyone else around here is probably just, oh, my Netflix is good. Right. I'm fine. So, but finally, I got a tech to come out and admit there was a problem. And he goes, yes, it's beyond you. We will we'll be sending it out a crew. And I said, can I get some communication on when this happens? I know this is beyond my local connection now, but I would like some communication so I can test a before and an after. Yeah. And let you know if it's fixed. So. We'll see. And look at that. We're look buffering. At that. Buffering. I am uploading... 1.5 megabit. That's it. That's all That's I'm saying. It. That's nothing. Yeah. And you were getting three the other day. So. Yeah. Yeah. What's, so. what's funny is I get the I have the exact opposite problem. We have the same internet company, but I have the exact opposite. I'm actually paying for only ten up. Yeah. And I'm getting like. And look, 12. we just dropped thirty seconds of my stream. Jeez. Yep. But I, I'm getting like twelve or fifteen. <laughs> but I'm paying for a gig to down, right. and I'm only getting like three to five. Yeah. Okay, so I am locally recording this stream. I will likely re-upload it when I'm done, um, just so you all know. So we'll try to stay live as long as we can. Bear with so, us if you want. If you are live um, and there's a bunch of skipping, there's going to be bonus content for you. That's right. There's later. There's incentive to watch it again. Yes. So <laughs> double likes. Oh man. You know what this sounds like though? Hmm. Sounds like we need a beer. Sounds like I need a beer. Sounds like we need a beer. And these beers today these are, are special. These beers. are very special beers. These are brought to you by one of our very own, or I should say, Jeff's very own. Oh, you're claiming my success. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I technically got him here. That's right. That's right. Um, uh, uh, Jeff's Patreon. So Funky Monkey uh, from Ireland actually mm -hmm. sent it. He came over and he was actually flying over. For I think you said it was QuakeCon or, or no, it wasn't QuakeCon. Uh, it was a it was a conference in Vegas last weekend. There was QuakeCon. There was something going on in Vegas, and then there was also DefCon down in San Diego. Yeah, so he um, was he was in Vegas. So so one of our guy, one of my Patreons was at uh, DefCon. Another was at San Francisco, and I was in Texas yeah. for QuakeCon. So uh, so he shipped us over some some beers from Ireland as he, he flew yeah. over. So we. He smuggled them in, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he literally smuggled these beers in. So we have uh, um, uh, Ob Brothers Brewing Mad Hatter Double IPA. We have Headband by Verdant Brewing. This is a pale ale. And I think we have a The Wall. Which another, is another, double. another double IPA. So we got two double IPAs and a pale. I'm on board. Get me a glass, right. sir. And Regan sends two dollars. Best non-alcoholic beverage. Why would I want a non-alcoholic beverage? Uh, that right would. Uh, uh, I don't know. Virgin gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he wants a recommendation on best non-alcoholic. Um. Soda. <laughs> I kind of like a Shirley Temple. You do the the. Uh, the it's the too sweet. Seven Up and Seven and Up grenadine. And, and Grenadine. You could do that. Um. Uh, I've I've done. Uh, Pineapple juice, orange juice, and just a splash of grenadine also makes a, a nice little yeah. citrusy drinkable cocktail. Yeah. I the the problem is for me, I got I really into these uh, flavored waters, the oil yeah. the essential water flavor. I'm really into those, and I really like the coconut one right now. So I really like that. It's very refreshing for me. And the thing is, once you start drinking those, every other soft drink tastes like syrup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and that's kind of like when you're saying it's like oh, grenadine, everything's tasting too sweet for me right yep. now. So what do you want to try? Oh, uh, let's see. I think I think these are both the same ABV. Yeah, yeah, these are both eight percent. This is a five percent. Eight percent. Um, and this one's a, a wheat ale. Isn't so it? This is just a pale ale, but or just might, a pale ale. It said, well, it says pale, yeah. but it might have wheat. Citra in mosaic, it. Columbus, and Chinook hops, Ooh. which is interesting because, because three of those come from Oregon. I know. I was going to say they're <laughs> literally over there. That's all Northwest. Yeah. So um, um, yeah, I did not have time to research any of these. Yeah. Uh, they came in the mail, and then uh, I had to go right away. So I just popped them in my fridge, and they're a bit cool. Yeah, because uh, uh, Citra, Mosaic, and Chinook are all Oregon Yeah, grains. they're all Oregon. Oregon. So <laughs> That's funny. I wonder how fresh those hops are. Yeah, don't know. But let, let's go with this let's one first. Let's go with that one. That's fine. I brought three because I figured they're only a pint a piece, so yeah. we'll need a bit. So, but as you're pouring that, how about I get into an article? Since Absolutely. Since we wasted yeah, some time. So, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting with the craft brewery industry. We've always thought they're like Sierra Nevada and Dogfish Head. They're all the big players now. Mm -hmm. Well, it actually turns out Anheuser-Busch Anheuser -Busch is actually kicking some butt. Has been buying more than we thought they had. Yeah. Uh, 
They've bought so many crapper. Oh, it's fine. It's pretty close. Uh, no, the, I got a lot more head. Yeah, 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 and you have a lot more body. Yeah, look at that. not, not that, that much more. It's, it's, it's a quarter it's like inch. A finger. That's a finger. <laughs> Anyways, Anheuser Busch has basically bought in so many craft breweries that they now are the largest distributor of craft beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I know. Not by much. It's not by much. Right. Uh, uh, Sierra Nevada and. Um, what is it? The Boston Brewery. Um, and uh, Boston Lager. Boston Lager. Or, um, uh, uh, Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams is, are, are usually the top two yeah. uh, craft brewery, uh, even though they're slightly owned, but they're not. They're still majority craft. You have, okay, it, it is a finger. Yeah, it's okay. a finger. It smells Sorry, good. I'm up a little higher. I have to get down smells, to the lower angle. Shut up. It smells good. It smells very citrusy. Yes. That's good. I like it. Very northwestern. It is very northwestern. <laughs> this tastes like a local beer. You know what? Oh, yeah. that's good. You know, I really, I, I think the body of this is probably comes to them a lot easier with that nice hard water. Oh yeah, totally. In Ireland, and mm-hmm. here we're having to put a bunch of chemicals in there. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're uh, out of my house. I got <laughs> totally hard water here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think they're at. Uh, where was it? I saw it. It was one point hundred uh, one hundred and seven million versus. Uh, is this the same article? This is the same article. Yeah. I swear. But anyway. This is the one you sent me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. Here. Yeah. Uh, Anheuser-Busch has, has produced 107.3 million, where Sierra Nevada did 100.7 million yeah. in sales. So yeah. they're not too far off. Uh, yeah. And, and Boston Brewing was right behind them at 94. And at 94. So, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's just very interesting. But this actually made me think of, like, you know, selling out. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know breweries that sell out like Elysian and Goose Island, mm-hmm. but this article talked about like Goose Island's IPA now is like the standalone. That's the go-to IPA through the whole country. I have some in my garage if you want it. Well, I, 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 it's a, it's a not bad. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah. But uh, and then they also talked about how Elysian uh, Space Dust is now yes. taking over that. Yeah, uh, which is just a little uh, started off as a little brewery here mm-hmm. in Seattle, but yep. you know the Northwest. And I remember when Space Dust was brand new and they were yeah. still craft owned. But now, because they're so Cause, yeah, globally they, they distributed. Got, they got bought out in 2013, I want to say. Something like that, yeah. yeah. So, um, they and they weren't even that big at the time when they got bought out. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were only Oregon, Washington, and some California. Yeah. So, that was a, an interesting interesting little article to, to read that Anheuser-Busch is beating out all these craft breweries. Yeah, it's... And you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I, I, I was thinking about this when I read that article, that uh, yes, a large company is buying these beers. Yes, we, we talked about the quality of craft beer when they're bought out by an Anheuser-Busch yeah. or a, uh, a Miller Coors or whatever, that the quality kind of does this. Yes. Their, their bottom stuff gets a little higher because they have to be able to sell it, and their top stuff gets a little bit lower. Yeah. But that's not to say that they're producing bad beer. Goose Island still produces some of my favorite beers that are out oh, there. Oh, yeah. They, they, they still and produce. And so does Elysian. I, yeah. I love Space Dust. I love, uh, they've got the Winter Frost. Oh, yeah. Uh, fantastic beers. And, and as long as Anheuser-Busch is allowing these breweries to still independently create beers and, and still do some experimentations. Uh, what's the Waldo Yeah, uh, Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Not, is it Sierra, not Sierra Nevada. Yeah. Um, Lagunitas. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, Lagunitas is still pumping out very, very unique beers. Yeah. And, and seasonal beers and, and experimental beers. And they're still allowed to do that, even yeah. though they're owned by, by Anheuser Busch. Yeah. So, so it's very, it, yeah. It, it seems to be that their, their core stuff kind of quality goes down because it has to be mass produced so much. But as long as the big company allows them to do their unique stuff, right. it seems that their unique stuff still stays very unique and they get access to some more weirder. Uh, stuff, right? Um, like you're saying, Goose Island. So there's the Bourbon County uh, mm-hmm. brand stouts, right. and they're fantastic every and, year. And we've also talked about uh, uh, Deschutes here in Bend, opening up a brewery in Virginia. Yeah, they're going to be producing different beer, and and they're starting to nationally and globally distribute that beer here. Now they started in Bend, and their headquarters is in Bend. Their quality is going to do this, even though they're not owned by an yeah, Anheuser-Busch exactly. conglomerate. You're, you're just having to spend more, right. more money. Like you have to normalize your product. Yes, exactly. 
So, so like I said, it's not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. So. Um, one of the things I do enjoy, though, is like when you're with friends, I do love chatting with people and talking to people. And um, a lot of us, like me, Steve, you, mm-hmm. we use Untapped mm-hmm. a lot of the times to sit there and check in beers. I mean, later today, I'm going to check these three in. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, and Untapped, I, I've been around since Untapped was just you know a very baby yeah. uh, app and everything like that. Um, but now they're they're expanding, trying to be some a bit bigger, adding more features all the time. And they've actually added now basically direct message chat uh, to your friends and phenomenal you ch- segue by the way. Right, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, it right I'm, in. I'm trying to get that in there. We were talking about trying to make this show a little more smoother. So I'm yep. like, how can I do this? <laughs> that was beautifully done. <laughs> And I know he's sitting in the car on the way over. Okay. I got it. I'll, I'll talk about friends, and then I'll talk about beer, and then social network, and boom, boom, we're in on tap. On tap, right there. I'm going <laughs> to screw the rest of this segment up. That's right. <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, Untapped, actually, they, they got bought, a, I don't remember the mm-hmm. company, but it was a, a wine company, and they were the ones that came up with the whole barcode system. Mm-hmm. And uh, they bought out Untapped, and now Untapped is this huge, huge, you know, beer empire app thing. But the chat thing, I'm not too really, I don't really care about that, because it's like the 10th app I have mm-hmm. to chat with my friends. I, and, you know, the 10 friends that I do chat with, they're mm-hmm. all the same. You, Jeff, Rhett, you know, Dan... Um, but the yeah, extra, some of the other cool things was they do a translation, an automatic translation. So mm-hmm. these beers, and there was a couple of beers that I had in German and uh, German beers and Spanish beers that in French I couldn't read them. Mm-hmm. I had some friends over at uh, Hops and Bros. They're from Quebec, uh-huh. and all the beers were in French. And then when I went and looked it up, there was a French uh, description. So I had to Google it and put it in Google Translator. Yeah. But now uh, uh, Untapped will automatically translate to the English setting or whatever language setting you set on the app. Mm-hmm. Actually, I was more impressed with that than the, the chat feature. Um, they also do the fingerprint unlock now and the facial recognition unlocked. Yep. So un- Untapped... On both iOS and Android. Yes. Uh, Untapped is trying to add a bunch of features uh, to their apps. Yep. So... Uh, I got another $2 donation from Regan, uh, one of my Patreon backers. Hey. Um, and uh, you hear me pimp Patreon a lot. It's not because I make a lot of money on there. It's because I like forming that community. I, I like forming it's a, great community. a community of enthusiasts who like what I'm producing and have some semblance of ownership over the community. Um, a couple of them I met in person. I met, uh, I think, three of you guys down at QuakeCon this weekend. Um, cool. And that was an absolutely great time. Uh, but uh, Regan, uh, one of the uh, the things I talk about on the, on the the uh, in my... Pim- pimping out yeah. <laughs> is uh, is hey get build advice get a- ask questions that's what we're here for. Uh, Regan was asking this week about upgrading to a Xeon 1240 versus his i5 4440, um, and is that a good way to go? And we advised him it's a good way to go. Two dollars, thanks for the advice. 1240 yeah. much faster. Right. So, yeah. Direct access to to myself, John, Steve, Rhett, Steve. Rhett, yeah, and then a bunch of other people on there. Yeah. I mean, we're not the only ones that sit there and ask advice. And we've we've got a couple of three D printer and CNC guys on yeah. there. Uh, we've got it, it. It really is forming into a really really awesome community. Yeah, of, it's of it's it's really nice. And yeah. we got four different channels. So I like this group. So you mm-hmm. you stay in that group. So. Um, it's it's really easy. We we have a group now who's gaming every single Saturday. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> I know. I, I'm like mowing my lawn. Hey, who's gaming? I'm like I'm mowing my lawn, guys. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Totally. <laughs> Soon we're gonna have an untapped chat. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I mean, we've even befriended a couple of people on Untapped, and they're like, "Hey, anyone on there?" It's like, "Oh yeah, join us." And we are uh, swapping beers back and forth. Mm-hmm. So like, "Hey, try this one. This is in your local area." Yep. Um. So it's pretty fun. You a sports fan, Jeff? Absolutely. I'm a pretty. I, I'm. I'm not a huge sports fan, but mm-hmm. I. I recently started liking sports. I really got my wife into football, but she only likes the fourth quarter. Yeah. She doesn't like any. She's like, I don't care about it. Mm-hmm. Tell me what's going on in the fourth quarter. Oh, is it a close game? And then she'll sit and watch. Yeah. But you know, she's a, she's a she's a Packers fan. <sighs> and I don't know what you know. What's funny? She became a Packers fan, and she's like, I only like it because I like those commercials Aaron Rodgers does. Oh. So. This is a better story. Better story. Uh, the the moment she declared it was the game that he broke his what was his arm or his, uh, his collarbone. His collarbone. Yeah. That that game. She's like, yeah, okay. Aaron Rodgers okay. is my guy, and she did. I was like, can you be a Patriots fan, <laughs> can, please? No, 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 she can stay a Packers fan. She can stay a Packers fan. So, but you know what? I was really happy that she wasn't a Browns fan. 
I don't mm. know anyone that's a Browns fan, actually. I know it has this huge cult falling a long time ago. Yeah. And it has, I mean, it's been so bad for the Browns, especially like last year. I don't even think they won a single game. Nope, they didn't. Budweiser. Finally, my Lions are not alone in that right. distinction. <laughs> It's been it's been so hard on the Browns that Budweiser has actually stepped in to incentivize fans and the team with free beer. This is hilarious. With free beer, <laughs> so they have stationed I think it was two hundred of these uh, electronic coolers full of Budweiser bottles. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of them are at the Coliseum, but they're all electronically locked, and they're stating that uh, if the moment the Browns win a game, mm-hmm. any game. They will automatically all be unlocked for free beer. Yeah. For anyone around there, obviously, I'm sure they're all around, you know, 20 people that are carded and everything yeah. like that. But you would I, hope. You would hope. Well, right? it's Cleveland. Yeah. So. And it's Budweiser. Who cares? This is water. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I thought that was kind of a cool thing, but mm-hmm. uh, good for Budweiser and whatever, <laughs> the Browns. I mean, it probably didn't cost a whole lot to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. You like that segue too? That was a good. Just... That that was a good segue. You're, you're getting better at that. Uh, the Lions should do it because the I, the water in Michigan sucks. <laughs> Actually, another article I was going to post was Budweiser released. Uh, they do an NFL uh, can, and the yeah. Eagles are the only one to get a specially fully designed can this year. Oh, really? Yeah, they're getting and they're changing the color too. So they get a brand new color, and mm-hmm. it's going to have the Eagle logo. Nice. On it, and they're probably going to suck this year, so it doesn't really matter. Just the way it goes. They got both their quarterbacks back. Which yeah, is... so who's going to play, though? Which one? It doesn't matter. <sighs> last year it didn't matter. I, I don't think it. I, I think last year was a fluke. Carson I think Carson, last Carson year, Wentz or Nick Foles? I think last year was a fluke. Th- this is an odd phrase to say if you're, if you're a football fan. Nothing disparaging against Nick Foles. He was a great quarterback in Arizona. He's a great quarterback in the NFL. Nick Foles, Super Bowl MVP. It's just a weird phrase. No. <laughs> well, like he barely got... I mean, I don't know. He didn't do half the work. Well, Carson Wentz got hurt, what was that, in game 14 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, and, and, then and they, were, they were already in the playoffs. They were already in the first right. seed. But then he... But then he, he yeah, but he took him there, and he was just like... Eh. Right, it, but the thing is, the quarterback was, doesn't have to win the game for you. He just has to not make mess the right it up. plays and not mess up. Yeah, like, their defense won the game. Their defense was insane. Their defense won but, everything. But it's such an odd phrase. Nick Foles, Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, look at that. We finished our beer during the beer news during segment. During the beer news segment. So another perfect segue to uh, crack another beer and get into tech. All right. Uh, what double would you like? Ooh. Yeah, I really like the art, but I, I really like the name. Yeah. Ooh, the wall. Let's go with the wall. The wall. The wall. Is it not made in Berlin, right? Uh, uh, I'm sure it's made in Ireland. Uh, you know what I really like? I did see it. It tells you this, the temperature. Oh, that's in, in Celsius. In Celsius. So, yeah. yeah our uh, best uh, beer best served around 8 degrees, which is 45 you like that. If I, if I, I think it's a little warm, or the, yeah. just because I, I couldn't get it too cold. Uh, Simcoe Cryo Hops, uh, Cascade, and Sorrento. Again, with the again, Cascade, again, with the Oregon again, Hops. Oregon. <laughs> uh, juicy Columbus and Cascade Hops with the late edition of Azaka. Mm. So, yeah, let's go with the wall. All right. New glasses? I um, think that was fine. They're, they're ales. They're, they're, all, they're, they're all They're all, all ales. Fine, so... It was so funny. My brother went to to Greece, and he went to this little tiny isla, uh, brewery on I'll this island. I'll try not short for you this time. Oh, okay. And uh, they were so, they are like, so into him. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a home brewer. Like, wow, you know, home brewers, we don't get too many often. Or those people often. It's like, oh, yeah. We, we just made this specialty beer, and we exotic hops. They're from Oregon. Yeah. And, that's cool. That's good. Yeah. And uh, it was just Willamette hops. <laughs> but again, over there, it's exotic. Over, over, yeah, they were like, oh, it's exotic hops, and we had to pay for the import. Right. And, and it's our best beer yet. And, right. it was, and he was like, so, yeah, it tastes like my home brew. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I do at home. Yeah, it cost me like 12 bucks. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I need to post some pictures sometime because uh, some when I take the back road to work, I drive by a 200-acre oh, hop farm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you and should. it smells amazing this time of year because mm. we're getting close to harvest season. Oh yeah, I know it's like a 
It's like four or five weeks away. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Mm. There's a sweet note in that that I'm trying there, to place. It, it almost almost has like like a, it's got the citrus. I almost want to call it like a marshmallow kind of smell. I almost get it like a Belgiany. Bubblegum? Mm. Bubblegum. Bubblegum. That's, bubble that's gum. it. That's it. Like I said, it's, it's a sweet... It's yeah. a sweet... It almost Especially like, when you drink it. Bubble yeah, gum. it's bubblegum. Like the, the, the pink when you unwrap yeah, it. The, the bubblicious. The bubble... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. exactly... And then, and then it has this bittering flavor at the back. Yeah. That is a, a very unique beer. That is very unique. It, it's good. It is. I'm, it is I'm, 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 so sometimes when I go, that's that's very unique. That that means I'm like leaning towards not like no. This is a good beer. No, it's it's a good drinkable beer, but it has complexity mm-hmm. to it mm-hmm. that I I enjoy digging through the beer and, yeah. and like hmm. It's got some flavors in there that I'm not used to tasting together. Together, exactly. Right. And I'm I'm going to enjoy continually drinking this and in the back of my head think of oh, what does this taste like now? What does this taste? like I want to chew right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not tobacco chew, but chew. Yeah, yeah. I want to chew some bubble gum. So. Some bubblicious, yo. Yeah, you know, and then bubblicious is pretty cheap. Right. And, you know, if you if you don't have a whole lot of money, if you invested it... See how I'm trying to do this, Jeff? <laughs> I was going to do that! <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't was know my you. segue. Ah, segue away, then. I'll just segue out of here. I'll, I'll then go yeah. ahead. This beer is great. I want to chew on this beer. So they imported some Oregon hops. It probably cost them a pretty penny. And... Oh. Uh, and and man, I would say like pretty coin, pretty coin, and yeah. and a lot of coin. And if they invested that in Bitcoin, boy, I, I hope they got out of that early. Yours were better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I was trying to work it. I was yeah. trying to work the crowd. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are both, yeah, they're not, dropping like flies. Not doing well. So back in January, um, at the peak of the the cryptocurrency market. Uh, both Ethereum and Bitcoin peaked at 20? record highs. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin peaked around nineteen thousand yeah. dollars each, um, and Ethereum peaked at around twelve hundred dollars that same week. Uh, today, Bitcoin <laughs> is a little under six thousand dollars per it, it, coin. It dropped to five and barely, and made, barely recovered, barely to, recovered to, to, to six to, by to, the end of the day. Yeah, just over six at the at the time of writing, and this was yesterday. This yeah. was yesterday evening. Um, Ethereum is at a nine-month low, down to two hundred and fifty-six dollars from its high of twelve hundred. Oh my gosh! So and, it's and down to almost one sixth of its original yeah. value. <laughs> In eight months, it dropped what 60 percent, sixty-five percent, I think it yeah. said. Yeah. Ouch! And yeah. even then, uh, oh, we we even talked about this back in January of it being at nineteen, and all of a sudden it dropped to mm-hmm. ten. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, were, Fe- February it felt like a stone. Yeah, it felt like a stone. And then you were calling it of uh, all. You can start seeing all of the graphics cards uh, mm-hmm. in the used market were starting yep. to level out, yep. and then prices are starting to drop. Right around more. March they leveled out. Right yeah. around April I started seeing a couple on store shelves yeah. again. Not still not at at retail prices, but they were in stock. Yeah. finally again. And then in May, it's like a couple more, and some of the prices are starting to drop. And then by June, it was like, boom, I can go buy a 1060 off the shelf for a retail price. Oh, yeah. Right I, remember, now. I remember in Patreon, we were like, I can go get this car for 120 right now. Right. Right. Um, I, I will say, during that time, I did buy a couple graphics cards. I bought one uh, when I did my, uh, should you buy a crypto miners card? Yeah, I was going to say. Because that, that, um, that and was... I, I paid $300 out of my own cash. To buy an RX 588 gig that had been mined on for six months to, to do that video. And and that was specifically for the purpose of, is there any degradation in performance? And I knew the answer. The answer is no, but I had to have a card to prove it. Yeah. And, and so that video cost me $300 to make. <laughs> um, but uh, I still use the card today. Well, it's not like I didn't need the heck, card. You know, that might be the guy's only profit right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be like, I sold my card. Especially for- if he only mined on it for six months, because he just got into that game in November yeah. or, or October of so he, last year. He might have hit like one or two or a half a coin or something like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm making this. It's going to be great. Right. Boom. January crashed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's worth nothing now. Um, but yeah, uh, I was watching... Uh, um, the Stevens. Oh no! I, w- I was at QuakeCon, and uh, we were talking about uh, uh, crypto miner coins. And uh, are we in favor of vendors making cards specifically for mining? And the answer is no. The answer is there's no good answer. Yeah. Uh, 
the problem is if you make a card specifically for mining, part of the miner's cost profit ratio is the resale value of that card once they're mm -hmm. done. Because gamers will still buy cards even if they've been mined on. Yeah. And and videos like mine prove that you're not gonna see any less less performance wear or performance or anything like yeah. that in that card. So if they're banking on being able to sell a card for three hundred dollars at end of life versus zero dollars for a mining card in, at end of life, that's a three hundred dollar swing in favor of just going and buying a graphics card anyway. Yeah, and you're not going to charge double for a mining card because then the miners won't buy it because that's three hundred dollars off their profit margin exactly. anyway. Yep. Um. So yeah, it, it was an interesting conversation to have with with a couple of guys who are in the graphics card market. I talked to a rep from Sapphire and another from Gigabyte who had the same exact answer mm. this weekend. Um, about there is no easy answer. There, there is no market solution for this. The market solution is gamers need to stop buying graphics cards from miners if they want this to stop. That's the answer yeah. because then the resale value goes away anyway. But the problem is gamers aren't willing to stop upgrading their hardware. No, they're not. <laughs> and, and eventually it'll just be that the miners are just going to want some kind of money mm -hmm. anyways yeah. uh, and they'll start possibly selling yeah. these cards for cheaper because they're going to be like, this is a used card. It's not a brand new card. Mm -hmm. I can't charge it. And I don't know if the degradation is bad or not. If there is. I mean, mm -hmm. not everyone is going to be that in-depth or that knowledgeable about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to call someone out here. Uh, uh, DJ Arcforce says, Oh my God, Bitcoin is so low right now. You guys all lost so hard. This is why these guys don't work for an investment firm. Um, number one, I'm not providing financial investment advice. Yeah. Uh, straight out. Number two... It's not difficult to see the writing on the wall. I'm not saying cryptocurrency is dead and gone. I'm saying it was overvalued. That that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And the market says that. The market doesn't doesn't say, oh yeah, you should invest in crypto when it goes from nineteen thousand to six thousand in less than six months. Yeah, everyone was saying that this is going to be the next currency that's going to replace the world. No, it was just a bubble. Right. It was literally just like. Yeah. That's all it was. We've, we've seen this with housing. We've seen yeah. this with dot-coms. We've seen this with a yeah. number of different er, industries. Early, early 2000s, mm -hmm. the dot-com industry, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, Where's pet.com? Right. <laughs> Monster.com, I think, is the only one that survived that. that yeah. And, that and Google. Yeah. Barely. And, bar and Google barely, barely survived. You, uh, Yahoo offered to buy Google for like $30 million sometime in like 2001, and they declined. Yeah. So... Uh, but yeah, who's a, a complete other story <laughs> of poor business decisions? Yeah, uh -huh. um, yeah, we're not we're not saying it's dead. We're just saying right. that it wasn't this. It's gonna take over all of our money and right. Uh, let's invest all of our money into Bitcoin because it's so safe. Mm -hmm. How many times have we seen an article? Oh, Bitcoin account gets hacked. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not as safe. It's electronic. Banks get hacked. Mm -hmm. they're, they're always going to get hacked. Anything electronic will eventually be broken. Right. And, and, it, and it's not even a, a hacked thing. The, uh, um, the the technology behind Bitcoin is why people are investing in it. Yeah. It's the decentralized network that holds crypto. Um, it's uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm drawing a blank on the on the terminology for it right now. But but that's what people are excited about, and that's why it has value. Yeah. Um, and it has value because people say it has value, not because it's backed by gross national currency, mm -hmm. which we talked about on this channel before. Um, it is not a traditional currency. Yeah. No. Yeah. We're not invested. We're just right. talking for as far as a tech right. point, and people are saying it is the golden goose that's going to fix everyone's financial <laughs> problems. Haha! <laughs> 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 Didn't expect a response to my comment. I feel bad now. Please know I love your channel. No, no, no. Don't feel yeah, bad yeah. because that was a great clarification. Yeah. That that was a, a, a great call and response. You, you blockchain. Thank you. Uh, blockchain is the exciting feature of cryptocurrency, and that's why cryptocurrency is worth something. Yeah. That's why Kodak built an ASIC miner. <laughs> uh, for their own Kodak coin, which yeah. I made so much fun of, and why Steven Seagal uh, uh, got into a Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. which uh, like crashed yeah. three three months later. Right. So so again, we we've talked about uh, cryptocurrency at length on this channel. I'm not an expert on it, but again, I, I understand the the fundamentals of it. And again, when you drop by. Almost eighty percent in value. Uh, you, you're you're worth one sixth of what you were seven months ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's probably bottomed out to where it should be now. I'm not saying it's valueless. I'm saying it's probably not a good time to invest in it. <laughs> no, it's probably not because it's probably gonna. I would say still teeter. The fact that all from January till now, yeah. it's been slowly declining. Yes, there are peaks that are showing that's going up, mm -hmm. but you know, right now, I don't think it's the big cash cow yeah. everyone thought about investing in it. Right. So. 
Who wants some Nvidia news? Raise your hand. I was about to say, like, what what segment you got for this? <laughs> I, I'm just going dive. Yeah. I'm just diving head. Dive straight in. All right. <laughs> Old school. I like it. That's right. Who's ready for some Nvidia news? Uh, there has been a lot of movement in the last 48 hours, um, and what's funny is Nvidia is almost trolling at this point. Their marketing team is on fire. Yeah. Um, so we'll just get in straight into video cards post. Now I, I normally don't like videocards.com as a source because they're they're kind of a rumor mill site in my opinion. Um, they 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 make a lot of claims without citing any sources, and sometimes there are no sources. Yeah. But in this case, this is a decent article that does a very good synopsis of the rumors or the uh, the hints within Nvidia's marketing material this week that have been uncovered. Yeah. This is this is the most comprehensive list that I found of all that. Um, so uh, there's a YouTube video uh, linked here. Uh, before the game, which is uh, their their tagline, hashtag Before the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, it's a great play on words. Number one, it, it's a great tagline for uh, for that because what they're trying to do is say this is the largest leap forward in graphics card technology yet. And that kind of makes sense when you know what's behind it, and we'll get into that. But they're also going through the history of gaming, and they're starting to show games uh, from the original uh, uh, Tank back in the Atari days. Oh, I love that game. uh, To moving forward into Doom, the original 1994 Doom, uh, to moving forward into 3D graphics with Tomb Raider and uh, Turok and and games like that. Mm -hmm. And and so all their marketing material in the last couple days has been progressing through the history of gaming, going into World of Warcraft, and, and, and then going into modern gaming with... Games like Rise of the Tomb Raider and yeah. Battlefield Five and, and so on and so forth. So Skyrim, yeah, yeah, Skyrim was another one they pointed out. So it it was a great retrospective of the last thirty years, thirty to forty years of, of PC gaming. They went back to nineteen seventy seven. It, it made you feel very nostalgic. Oh, I remember playing that game. I remember playing that. Game. Oh, I love playing that. Every game. single oh, game they it. showed on there, I played. Yeah, you're just like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it it gave you right. gave you that feeling right again. So uh, the list of hints within the video. Uh, there's a chat session between two users, uh, Roy Tex and Not Eleven, <laughs> which is great because what they're doing is supposedly that they're renaming the GTX 2070 and 2080 to the RTX 2070 and 2080. 2080. The reason they're naming it RTX is for that aforementioned largest leap forward in gaming technology, and that's ray tracing. That's real time ray tracing technology. Uh, in the TLDR version of ray tracing, instead of mapping polygons and then mapping light and saying how does light reflect off those polygons or ha- how would light be interpreted by those polygons, what it's doing is all ray tracing is, is projecting light and letting the polygons react to the light. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's taking what we take as rendering technology and flipping it around and, and doing it from a different perspective. So I'm always rendering my perspective and where is the light coming from and how does it re- yeah. react and reflect. Um, and, uh, Jensen even did a a great demo on stage with the Quadro RTX cards, Mm. uh, this last week where he went through, uh, the development of Pixar. Um, and and they said they started with Toy Story and and they developed a full feature length film that required 800,000 hours. I remember remember watching a documentary just on that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Toy Story was revolutionary because it required 800,000 hours of CPU processing time at 100 megahertz yeah. on, on Spark CPUs. So that's how they rendered Toy Story out. And it's a beautiful film. Even to this day, it's a good technology. Yeah. Um, it, it, it aged very well. And he moves forward and with uh, uh, with one of the fu- future videos, they, they did global light sampling uh, where the light would react to different surfaces and cast different colors. Mm. And so if you're reflecting off a red wall, all of a sudden that... The direct light is white and the reflected light is red. red. Um, and uh, and then he went through into cars and cars actually used ray tracing. And uh, that's how they got on the on the cars. They got reflections. They got real-time lighting. Mm-hmm. They got real-time perspectives. Um, it wasn't in real time back then, but that was ray traced rendering. Yes. Um, and uh, flash forward to today and I believe... Uh, Finding Dory, which also used ray tracing for its rendering, oh, the water was uh, beautiful. required like 400 million CPU compute hours um, on 2 gigahertz GPUs. <laughs> so, I mean, the amount it's, of processing power is is something like 4,000 times what was required to render Toy Story. Yeah. And it's because of these technology advances. Um, but anyway, 
So RTX 2070, 2080. And we're seeing GTX 1050 or uh, 2050, 2060. Mm-hmm. Um, so apparently the, the 2070, 2080 will be the only cards that have the ray tracing cores built in or what they're calling RT cores. Uh, not 11, the other username, quite obviously. Not 11, 70, 11, yeah. 80. Um, 8T is another username, 80, Mac 20, 20 series. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Alana T, which is Alan Turing. Uh, the, these cards are Turing based. Oh, okay. Uh, all, all of their past cards have been named off famous electrical engineers. Oh, or, okay. Or, so you've got Turing, you've got Pascal, you've got oh, Ampere, Pascal. you've got Kepler, you've got. Uh, uh, you go through the history of electricity, and, and those are them. Um, an, another reference to uh, consumer electronics and 20 series, Zenith 20. Uh, Ray is another name that's dropped in there. Give me 20. Yeah. Um, uh, they provided a GPS coordinates, which is uh, uh, GamesCon in Germany. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be released Yeah, during that. And a rolling date appears in the numbers 2080. So, again, that's the most comprehensive list that I could find. Um, and, uh, yeah, so apparently sometime on Monday we should be seeing the RTX, RTX 20 2070 2080. Yeah. Question is, will you get one? Yep. And when will you get one? I'll buy one. You'll buy one? I'll buy one. What are they going to be like? What, 18, you think? We, uh, no, 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 no. That, that, that's what the Quadro start at. Oh, okay. No, uh, no, these should... Uh, there's, there's been talk that these are going to be more expensive than the current series. There's talk that the 2080 is going to be around $800. Oh, okay. Uh, and the 2070, possibly around five to 600 is, is the oh, pricing so, that I'm hearing. I was hearing. in a different article that we have. Right. Um... Now, I do know on good authority that on Monday this will be more of a paper launch, that the cards will possibly be able, available for pre-order on Monday, but there will be no cards available for sale on Monday. Mm. So yeah, it's going to be a couple, two, two, three more weeks. Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. It's going to be two, three more weeks after August 20th before these cards are readily available. Um, so go ahead and go to the, the next slide. There you go. Uh, yeah, that one. So uh, this is the architectural difference between the Pascal and the Turing cards, Turing being on the right. Um, and actually, I can probably turn off my video source. There we go. Um, so the Turing card on the right, uh, it's a 18.6 billion transistors versus 11.8 billion transistors. And a lot of that comes to the ray tracing cores, which are built in. It should be fairly equivalent on the CUDA cores to Pascal as far as the numbers that I've been reading. Um, uh, probably slightly higher, whereas the GTX 1080 has uh, 2,560 CUDA cores. Uh, This one's supposed to have about 3,072. Yeah. So it's supposed to be an evolutionary... or It's almost twice the size. Not revolutionary, but evolutionary. Evolutionary. uh, Jumping CUDA cores. And all of the the chips across the, the, the Turing line are supposed to be evolutionary. It's supposed to be jumping up to the next level. Mm -hmm. Um... But, uh, yeah, the physical size of this die is absolutely insane. Um, so, okay, we can go to the next one. And, of course, every single gamer... Knows this. ...is thinking of this. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> I know I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I only have a 1080 today, so I'm like, hey, I'm still yeah. one of those. Yeah, you're at a 7970. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't game that much anymore, though. Yeah. That's the thing. So I, I have to, I'm, I'm going to call credit to, um, uh, just because we got into your, your CPU in, in particular. Um, by the way, that's about all the news that we have on the NVIDIA card so far. That's all the rumor mill. That's everything else. That's everything just we Just wait know. till next week. Right. Wait wait till Monday. All will be revealed. Yeah. Um, but since we got into to yours, uh, we talked a couple weeks ago that I was going to be getting a donation from a fan. And we were going to possibly be doing a, a computer upgrade or computer save build. Yeah, save my, save my computer. So, uh, were you aware of the shape those packages arrived in? I was not. Okay. Um, I'm going to go and grab one of the boxes right now. All right, now these are the donated from a Patreon or donated, donated from... Donated from a Patreon. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, because yeah. he had a bunch of he stuff. Had a bunch of hardware that... Yes, I remember, I remember the discussion. This, this is a, uh, a fan from Norway that sent me this. Um... And uh, this is the shape of the first box that arrived. Just I did not open this with a knife. I did not open this with anything else. 
This was damage from water. This was damage from customs. So, oh, did a rat live inside of it? No. There's nothing left to the cardboard. This this was cardboard, and there's nothing left to it. Oh my god. So now what this fan was sending me was a GTX 780 with a full aqua tuning water block, uh, which is what I was going to give you. Ah. Yeah. Um. It. Uh, let, let's see. Uh. So wait, it just came as a box? No, no, I, I got all the parts. Oh, but they're... Okay. I got all the parts. Um, in fact... Here you go. Oh. Wait, that does not look nice. Right. So this was basically soaked in salt water for at least a couple of days. Dude. Uh, both boxes were. Uh, the complete list of parts was three 360 mil rads from, uh, from EK. Uh, there was a, uh, an EK... Uh, pump and reservoir combo there was a whole bunch of fans something like 40 fans uh, from noctua oh uh fractal um a, a whole bunch of very very nice fans like no junk in there um there was this gtx 780 um not the ti just the 780 so the two gigabyte model, or three gigabyte model i guess um with a full aqua tuning water block on it there was a gtx 1080 with an ek water block on it there was a Z170 micro or mini ITX board. There was an FM2 mini ITX board with an AMD A6300, I think, on there. Um, there was some RAM in there. There was a one terabyte SSD. There was, was even warped. Right. There, there was hundreds and hundreds and possibly thousands of dollars of parts in this box, and they were literally and utterly destroyed. Oh, yeah. The screws have rust on yes, them. Yes, yes. Um, what I will say, the 1080 survived. Oh! The, the GTX 1080 survived. Now, I already had that planned for another build. Ah. Um, but it, literally, the fans and the 1080 are the only thing that survived out of that box. Now, was, was the box insured? Uh, the box was insured. There is some sh insurance money with it. So okay. I'll, I'll be getting a little little kickback from that. But it's not the value of the parts. Ah. Um, I was going to say, like, I'm going to get a brand new so, RTX. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Right, Jeff? Oh, so, save my... Save my computer with an RTA. <laughs> yeah. So that was the first box that arrived, and it arrived three days prior to the second box, and it was the better of the two shaped boxes. Oh. Uh, that uh, That's one of them. The other one's somewhere around somewhere. here. Um, I saved them just in case I need to do anything further for insurance claims. But Pictures and whatnot. Yeah, they were... Oh, there's the other one over by the, uh, the trash can there. Oh, so, I thought that was just trash when no, I walked in. No, exactly. So, um, yeah. Uh, the, the, beer, the beer that came from Ireland shipped. Yeah. Rainbow. Well, he brought it to Vegas first. That's true. So, yeah. uh, but uh, anyway, the 1080 survived. You're you're going to see that in an upcoming build. But I wanted to give him a shout out because this is a dude who literally just had a bunch of tech laying around that he upgraded. He upgraded to like a dual 1080 Ti system from his GTX 1080 and had a whole bunch of other water cooling and and high end parts. Oh yeah, I remember left Steve looked, talking to him. Yeah. Right. And 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 he's just a great fan of the show. And he sent all this to me, and it was utterly destroyed. And and he was pretty heartbroken at first, but. But dude, uh, still Thank, so absolute much. props yeah. to you because you you are an amazing human being. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I wanted to make sure everyone still knows that. <laughs> so, so thank you so much, uh, Regan. Two dollars. Uh, press F. Pay respects. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, there, there's a, a dozen EK fittings in there. There was a pipe bending kit. So that, oh. that all came through just fine. Oh, yeah. I think the fittings are going to be okay. There's a couple other parts that are good. But yeah, that 780 has rust on the screws. Oh yeah, it was. Um, in fact, let me see if I can get the... Uh, if you can focus on it. I mean, there's just fog, yeah. there's salt in there. So this is the condition the block came in. And, and as soon as these came in, I didn't bother taking any pictures. I was thinking about doing a video, but I immediately just got into... Uh, that's uh, supposed to be clear, by the way. Recovery mode. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, and the back's even better. See this screw right here? That's completely solidified with rust. Yeah. Um, oh, and the back of the PCB was damaged as well. Yep. It was it was uh, Bent or warped. hit, and the whole board is warped. You can see that little bend yep. to the end of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> DJ Arc Force, $20. Still feel bad about earlier. <laughs> Dude, Don't no, feel no, bad no, about no. earlier. That's actually a great comment. It, it led to a better conversation. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't mind people attacking me. Uh, and, and I say this all the time, and I said it at the end of my most recent video. I read every single comment. I don't read all the chat, but I read every single comment because constructive criticism or otherwise, it can still help me learn and do better and find out what you guys want. 
And if I'm not clear about something and you go, oh, these guys don't know anything about investment banking. And I go, well, actually, we've been talking about this for a while. That can open up another conversation yeah. entirely. I, I can phrase it differently or maybe talk, maybe you change my mind. That's happened a couple times too. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, do not feel bad. I, I enjoy uh, viewer interaction. I, it's one of the things I absolutely love. It, you got to take the good with the bad. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes people are no. jerks. <laughs> investment um, banking and everything. We know about that. Now, does Jeff know anything about water cooling? Not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke from a previous video. And the comments that he reads all the comments. Uh, no, I don't know anything about thermal paste. Sorry, sorry. That's it was, what it is. It was thermal thermal paste. paste. Thermal paste. Yeah. So, so someone got really, really offended that I didn't bother testing the thermal paste that came in ketchup packets for a video involved with AliExpress water cooling. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you test that? It would have taken like 10 minutes, man. <laughs> yeah, someone got really, really yeah. offended. Yeah, 10 minutes of testing is actually like two to three hours of video shooting and yeah. editing. And it was like, yeah, it's not really worth it. And mm -hmm. that's not what we're here for. All right. I'm here to test the block, not the thermal paste. Yeah. I'd rather test the block. All right. So, but uh, give you 25 bucks in postage for a rusty t <laughs> 1070. <laughs> there you go. No, because I think the uh, the block's worth more than that. Besides, it's a good window hanger now, or wall hanger. A wall hanger, so, yeah. So, yeah, th this is going to be on display from now on. It's a very nice-looking looking card. It is. It's an EVGA GTX yeah. 780. They were beautiful cards when they were new. Um, so, but yeah. It looks better with the water cooling on it, yep. too. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's get into some Threadripper news, because I'm almost done with this beer, and... Or do we want to transition or open uh, a new beer before we get into that? Because that's another... Uh, that's another... That's only... That's not too big. And then we're into game. So that's the last tech. Okay. okay. That's the last tech we well, have. We'll, so we'll just crack a beer in the middle of Threadripper then. That's fine. That's okay. That's fine. All right. So Threadripper is now on the market, available, and and benchmarks are out. Yes. Uh, um, quite impressive benchmarks. Yes. Very yeah, impressive very, benchmarks. Very, very impressive benchmarks. All right. So, Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX and 2950X are both available for sale today. That's their 16-core, 32-thread, and 32-core, 64-thread. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's oh. like, that's the one Jeff's like, I'm going to go buy that one. <laughs> How do I go? Well, like, you might be rethinking that $25 sale right now. <laughs> that's $25 Who wants more. to buy a tape measure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Signed by everyone at yeah, Craft Computing. <laughs> yeah, I'll... Is my signature worth anything, honestly? <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, you're going to get some guy, yeah, I'll, I'll trade you for this, for your signature. Totally. You know what? I could sign the block and sell it to the highest bidder. Oh, gosh, whatever. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a raffle. There you go. You should, you should when you move the office, because if no one knows well, yet. Well, I, I wasn't getting oh. into that yet. Oh, my bad. Okay, oh, so I, I had a segment. Yeah. I can't, it popped into my head. Yeah. My bad. Okay, sorry. Jeez. Hey, if you stay this long, it's a preview. <laughs> it's a hint. It's like... Uh, when I move it, my it, office. Thanks. It's like NVIDIA's video. It's, you got to decrypt it. Yeah. <laughs> what did he mean by that? Hashtag not 173 square feet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what my office currently is. I measured it. <laughs> I actually catted it up. And, and uh, boy, it's... it's. Pr Anyways, Ryzen! Wait, wait. Corey. Corey Schroeder. Uh, $25 Whoa. donation, a bit of cash for the realest YouTuber on this platform. Sorry I cursed so much at QuickCon. I got a bit excited meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey, when I'm not on this show, I swear like a sailor. Yep. It's a bad habit. Uh, but, uh, Corey, dude, great to meet you. Uh, you were actually the first fan at QuickCon who ran into me and, and recognized me. And then you were gracious enough to become a Patreon. Dude, you rock. Great to meet you. So, thank you so much, man. Uh, by the way, about somewhere between a dozen and 18 people uh, walked up. Now, a couple of people like, Rick, Jeff, I so wanted to meet you, man. And a couple of them were Patreons. Uh, I, th I think I had three different Patreons stop by and say hi. That's cool. Um, and, and whatnot. But but there were probably about at least another 10 who go, you, do I know you? Do you do videos? By Are you on YouTube? I'm on YouTube. Okay. Where have I seen you before? Right. Linus Tech Tips, you ever watch that? Yeah, yeah not on that one. Yeah, not on that one. Not on that one. Yeah. Uh, so one of the guys, I went, as always, I'm Jeff. He goes, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, but again. <laughs> Jeff walked away like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, no, Qu QuakeCon was a great time. And, and, and thank you all to all who came out. So, that was cool. 
Uh, we'll also be at PAX West in three we, weeks. We will be. Two weeks. Two. Holy crap. Is it? That's like two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. And yeah. we will all be there at least. I, I can only make it one and a half days. Yeah. But the, everyone takes over that. Right? One and a half days, everyone will mm-hmm. be there. So um, yeah, we'll be walking around the show floor at PAX. Literally just gate crashing, talking to booths, yep. meeting fans. We have, we have thing, a so. couple appointments, but not too A couple many. appointments. Uh, the, it'll ramp up here in the next week or yeah. so. As people get their schedules dialed in. We should do um, a, a craft computing after party. Yeah. <laughs> we might advertise like a fan meetup. Maybe Saturday night. That'd, That'd be, be a fun. good time to do. Or Friday night, actually. Oh, Friday, yeah. Friday, Friday night. night would be a fun time, too. Yeah. yeah. What time are you going to be up Friday? I don't know. Don't know? As fast as I can get there. Okay. Leave early. I'm trying. Pack your bag, go to work, and then leave straight from work. I'm thinking about that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I'm even thinking about not going to work. Yep. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah. I got plenty of vacation time. That's right. All right. Uh, didn't go to SmashCon. No, I didn't go to SmashCon. All right. Uh, so Threadripper. Threadripper. We're, we're talking about Threadripper. Like we, we're, we skip on this one, Jeff. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. We were getting a little sidetracked. Let me get my uh, my stuff open here so I can actually read it on my screen. Uh, open. There it is. All right. So uh, 2990WX and 2950X benchmarks are out. Uh, for those who don't know, the 2950X is... Uh, Seven ninety nine, I want to say, or eight ninety nine, eight ninety nine, I think. And the twenty nine ninety WX is the workstation variant, the thirty two core. It is selling for seventeen ninety nine. So yeah. these are high end desktop chips. They are very expensive. Um, but uh, early benchmarks are out. If we scroll down a little bit, uh, sixty four megabytes of cache on the two workstation chips, thirty two megabytes of cache on the uh, the gaming chips. Um, and only the lonely 1900X, which is in my workstation behind me, has 16 megabytes. Mm-hmm. Uh, or megabytes. Megabytes. Right? I was saying bit. Um, all of them have quad, quad channel quad. memory. Um, only the last three have the lower end. And, and that was, the, yeah, and that, that was 2666. Uh, I'm actually running mine at 33,066 oh. is what I've got mine clocked to. So they, they do support higher. That's just the official out of the box specs. Um, but the top two are, are using the big 125 watts, too. So they're, they're going to be running a little bit higher. Uh, they're 250 watts versus 180 watts. Yeah. Um, I will say with the 1900X overclocked, I am seeing 195 watts from the wall um, with, with it running at 4.1 gigahertz, mm. which is my my top stable overclock. So, yeah, these these are not to be trifled with no. by, by lower-end chips. Um, uh, I think my, 1950, or my 1900 gets about an 1870 Cinebench score. That's going to be nice with that new RTX car going in there, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what a lot of people are curious in is the benchmarks, though. And uh, I'm taking my benchmarks from TechSpot. It's it's a website I like to go to to get very generalized stock numbers. Doesn't do a lot of, of uh, enthusiast overclocking, but very consistent testing. Very mm. very much like Gamers Nexus. Um, so uh, these are the ones that I found first, so they get to go on first. Um, so Cinebench... Obviously, the 2990WX just cranks it, kicks the absolute crap out of anything, and takes everyone's lunch money. Oh yeah, and is the king of the jungle gym. Uh, uh, not necessarily in single-threaded performance, although it's only five points behind. Yep, not not really. Yeah, and it's, it's only not... five points behind an Intel chip. Yep. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so five thousand out of the box in Cinebench. That's freaking insane. Um. What's even more insane is if we look at those second and third place numbers. Now, the i9-7980XE is Intel's 18-core, $1,800 um, behemoth consumer yeah. high-end desktop chip. It's not a Xeon. It's their high-end consumer chip, uh, their highest-end consumer chip that they have right now. Um, 18 cores, 36 threads. It's cranking out a 3317 and a 180 for a single-threaded score. The interesting thing to me is the next one is the 2950X at 16 core, 32 threads, so two less threads, four less cores. Yeah. Sitting basically seven percent, yeah, seven percent behind it in in multi-threaded score and the price and one percent behind it in it, single-threaded yeah. performance. And what is the price difference? A thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big one right there. That's 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 what. AMD or sorry, nine hundred dollars. Yeah, eight ninety nine versus seventeen ninety nine. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that's what's insane to me. 
is... Well, yeah. Well, what's bad is even the next Threadripper is still really close. Yeah, the 1950X, which is the 16 core. I mean, it's... It, it's still right there. And that's based on, on the last-gen technology or yeah. the... the First generation, where this is the first generation refined. This is Zen yeah. Plus, not Zen 2. Two. I'm not buying a Zen Plus CPU because I'm waiting for Zen 2. Um, but still, it, it's still so close. Right. I mean, yeah, it's not quite up there, but for the price value, yeah. $1,800 mm -hmm. for this high-end Intel chip, and really, people are only going to be buying it because, yep. oh, it's an Intel. No, you might need to do the whole, hey, AMD, <laughs> mm -hmm. look at that thing. Yep. Um, I had a very interesting conversation with a couple different people at QuakeCon this weekend. I keep going back to that, but... Hey, you met a lot of people. When you're surrounded by people who are in the industry and have been in the industry for 20 plus years, you, you have these kinds of conversations. Yeah. So it's, it's really nice to hearken back to them. Um, I had one guy say, I bleed I bleed blue. You, you cut me, it, it's blue in my veins. Mm -hmm. I, I am an Intel fanboy through and through. But I'm really intrigued with what Ryzen is doing right now. And I said, here's the deal. Zen Plus is not Zen 2. That's a completely different distinction. And what AMD has never done in the history of AMD is hit Intel in the jaw. They've done that plenty of times. Yeah. They, they've come out and go and, and gotten yeah. a, a real good sucker punch in and made Intel rethink their entire strategy. Number two is they have not come out with okay. that body blow second, yeah. second hit. Um, they, they haven't finished the job. They have never come out with a second generation that is better than the first. They've never done the follow through. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They, they have never taken Intel to the map. They've beaten them to benchmarks. We, we've, we've talked about that extensively. They do that and then the next chip just completely fails. Yeah, you, you have the original Athlon, which beat Intel to one gigahertz, which Intel had dominated the market since 1986. And all of a sudden in 1988, here comes AMD nipping at their heels and then beats them to the one gigahertz chip mark. You have the Athlon X2 series, which beat them to consumer level dual core. You have AMD 64, which is now the standard 64 bit uh, instruction set. It's not Itanium Intel, it's, yeah. it's AMD 64 um, and, uh, and whatnot. Well, you fast forward to today, or to like the FX series, the bulldozer, the pile driver, those kind of things. FX was not a bad system when it came out. The problem is it was already slightly behind Intel, but it was much cheaper. When pile driver came out, it wasn't any better. No. It, it, it was it was a marginal improvement at best. Um, and it was a marginal improvement at way, way higher power consumption. Um, so AMD has always done well to get that first, that first like, little yeah, that, hook that in. Yeah, that first little hook in. Because usually Intel always has, I got some up my sleeve. Right. Don't worry oh, yeah, about we, this. We've had this in the, in the back pocket we've for had, a couple yeah, years. All right. We'll just drop to, this. Time and, to release it. Right. Right. It doesn't look like that right, right. now. Right. They've done that with, with Nehalem when they dropped their $1,000 Extreme Edition chip. They yeah. did that with Core 2 Quad. They did that They did that a number of times. They go, oh, we've got this in our back pocket. Might as well release it now. Yeah. Um, Intel doesn't have anything. Number nope. one, right now. They have nothing in their back pocket. And they're not going to have anything in their back pocket for three more years. Oh, yeah. Because we've talked about what they're even planning. Right. And what they're planning is still way far behind right. of what AMD is showing. Right. Number two is AMD just refined their first generation launch. I call Zen Plus Zen 1.0. Yeah. Uh, whereas the original Ryzen technology, that's the original Threadripper, original Ryzen, I'd call that like a 0.8. It was buggy. It was buggy. It was great performance for value, but it had issues with memory controllers. There were mm. tons of BIOS issues. There were tons of compatibility issues. There's still issues with certain applications and, and workloads that don't work completely right on Ryzen, but they're getting better every single day. What I call Zen Plus is Zen 1.0. Mm -hmm. What should have been the 1.0 release. Um, or not the should have been, but what really is... Perfected. Okay, AMD is, or... is here. We have a good product. Yeah. Um, and I say that and I run uh, an original Threadripper. So, <laughs> you know, um, is what it is. Yeah. But uh, what I'm excited for is what I've seen out of Zen 2. Out of the roadmap for Zen 2. Mm-hmm. Um, that is dropping from a 12 nanometer process down to a 7 nanometer process. That is uh, um, getting much faster memory support. That is listening to the consumers and giving the consumers what they I, want. I think that's the best. And that is right. being at a far more competitive price point than Intel has even dreamed of in the last decade. Oh, yeah. I, I think Intel has become more of like the Apple of you're buying a brand name now and we're... 
putting out okay products. I, I wouldn't even do that. I think Intel's problem was when there's no competition, there's no one pushing you to be better. And if all you have to do is a 5% IPC performance increase per year, that's easy to do. Yeah, well, and then they're probably also looking at their bottom dollar. Like, oh, we don't need to ha have that right. head guy up there who basically was the creative genius behind mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, throw you to the curb. And the AMD is like, hey, here's mm -hmm. a bag full of money. Come work for us. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> here's what I was going to give Intel, but now I'm going to give it to you. Right. Uh, but. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. That's what was that? Um, no competitiveness. No competitiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, AMD has never had that, that second hit. And Zen 2 is going to be that second hit. Yeah. And when it drops in March, AMD is not only going to be better performance per dollar, which they, they absolutely have the crown today. They're going to be better performance overall. Oh, yeah. I and, would and, say. and like you said, it's going to be a while for Intel oh, to here, even... Here, here's where I was at. Um, Intel, the chips you're using today, the chips in 2018 that you're using today, are refined Nehalem chips. They are the original i7 x58 chips that have shrank from 45 nanometer down to 14 nanometer. Mm. That's all Intel has done, is they shrink their die, they get a little more efficient, they shrink their die, they get a little more efficient. It's what was referred to as the tick-tock in Intel. First, first you have the original i7 uh, for the x58, then you come out with the, the Z68 platform, and, and that's your tock, and that's your consumer level chips. That's not the enthusiast chips, that's the consumer level. That's yeah. when the i7-860 and the i5-640 came out. Mm -hmm. um, so that was your tick. That was your talk. The next tick was Sandy Bridge, second gen uh, i7. I7s. And then came Ivy Bridge, which is the same socket, same size, same, size, same die. Um, and that was refined. It was better memory control. It was about 5% faster IPC. It was better power efficient. That's your talk. And then they went to the next and then the next. And so, and so your 4000 and 5000 series are tick tock. Your 6000, 7000 series are tick tock. Unfortunately, 8th series was another tock. And 9th series is looking another, like another, another tock. tock. There's there's no tick. Intel has no tick left. They, they, they forgot how to tick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this was very evident uh, when 8th uh, gen Intel Mobile came out. And they're based on 7th gen mobile technology. 8th gen Intel Mobile is just rebadged 7th re gen chips. That's mm -hmm. all they are. They don't have an 8th gen mobile chip. Um, that They're just refined KB Lake. Um, same thing with the uh, the X299. Those are all 7000 series. Those are all 7th gen chips. Those are all KB Lake. They're, they're not Coffee Lake and they're certainly not Whiskey Lake. Um, mm, whiskey so, lake. <laughs> yeah. They said tick, tock, 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 tock. Talk. The problem is when you talk for so many years, and that's all Intel has done is talked, like what I did there. Ah. Ah. Um, all they've done is talked. Meanwhile, AMD went back to ground zero and built a, grand, a brand new architecture from the ground up over five years. Yeah. And now AMD is, has, has a lineup all the way to Zen 4 that they've released publicly, and I'm sure they've got five and six in their back pocket too that they're talking about at least internally. Yeah. Of how they can refine Ryzen. Intel's got nothing. No, they, they really do have nothing. And even, the, what, I forgot what the presentation was, but even with them trying to present that overclocked cooling system, mm -hmm. that was nothing. Mm -hmm. It was literally nothing. And they were just stretching. They were putting a bunch of turbocharges on this uh, ninth, i9 generation you know, chip. It was just, that was crap. And, and there's nothing to even... In the distance or rumors of what's coming out, what could be coming out. Yeah, someone was saying beer. <laughs> uh, it's just another double IPA, the Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter, oh, oh brother brewing. Oh brother brewing. So it's it's just, it's AMD. I bet we're going to start seeing Intel's consumer market drop to like all of the uh, laptops and, and people like selling stuff. It's going to be... AMD processors over Intel processors. Mm -hmm. It absolutely uh, and, is. And then we're going to see the price drop and these performance things. That we'll probably see even better performance out of these laptops. You, you know you know where the crazy market is, though, is the server market. And oh. it's a market that AMD has never even been able to crack. They hold about a 3% market share, and that's only out of the generosity of some server marketers' hearts. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, 
for for as low as AMD got in market share with the consumer market, which is about 15%, they have been laughable in the enterprise space. Um, and I've talked about this on the show before too. Uh, when you come out with a new technology for data centers, generation one is a show me what you got. Yeah. Is a, we're coming out with this energy efficient chip and it's scalable and it's powerful and performance per watt, we beat the competition. And the enterprise market will go, okay, give me three of those. Like literally three. I yeah, want to run I, like I just want to want you, I want to try something. I, I want to run a rack of those, and I want to do do some data crunching, and I want to it, see are they probably, actually efficient. And it's probably their personal data. Like ah, I'll just try it on my right. home server. Right, exactly. Get, get, get give me one rack of those. I, yeah. I want to I want to try one rack, and we'll and we'll go from there. We'll use it as a dev server. Yeah. Um, generation two, they start buying crap. Yeah. And when I say they start buying crap, they start buying warehouses worth of data center equipment to put in place. And that's what happens with the generation two. And as I said, AMD has never had a gen two where they've come up for the uppercut knockout blow. Um, AMD's got a gen two and they have a gen two in Epic. And, and in fact, in December, they're launching seven nanometer Epic CPUs. And it's looking like it's going to be a jaw hit. And it's looking like it's going to be an, a devastating blow yeah. for Intel on the server market. Um, and AMD's marketing is on point. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fantastic marketing. They they're doing like some guerrilla warfare marketing. Xeon was big, so was Cole. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, then they did like that whole Twitter rant and uh, uh, they, they did one about the dinosaurs yeah. too. Yeah, oh, it was fantastic. Like it, yeah. it is actually just even if you're not even into tech, you just know like okay, these are two rival brands like yeah, Nike and Adidas, mm -hmm. and it's just like wow, holy crap, these are funny. It makes you want to go and look into these beer, or I'm saying beers just because you're holding that. Yep. Uh, into these chips and brands. Into these beers. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Uh, what again? Kind of fu funny thing of we were saying marketing too. There's even this. It's a AMD Ryzen. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were talking right at the beginning of how fast and how overclocked they're going. Yeah. And some guy went and like overclocked it to six gigahertz. Yes. So, so this came out late last week. Uh, not not this particular story. This story oh. was actually yesterday. Was was August fourteenth. Um, someone got AMD uh, the twenty nine ninety WX, which is the thirty two core. Uh, it's a three point four gigahertz base clock, up to five point two gigahertz, and was blowing Intel out of the water and overclocked. Oh yeah. Um, and 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 here's the other thing: is Intel's or AMD has never really competed that well in the high end overclock space either. Um, they had a couple winners in there with like an FX processor hitting seven gigahertz or something mm -hmm. like that, but they've never done well. Um, well, yesterday they got a Threadripper 2990WX to six gigahertz under <laughs> LN2 and scored an 8300 in Cinebench, yeah. which is closing in on the record for a dual processor system. <laughs> at, at least, at least it was before, uh, this... Der Bauer blew it out of the water a couple weeks ago with yeah. dual overclocked ethics. Mm. This this was awesome. I love this picture. Yeah, <laughs> it's just fully frozen. Yep. So yeah, it's it's even frozen to the RAM on the side. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, all of a sudden their their processors are starting to compete in the high end architecture space. They're starting to compete in the mid range architecture space. They're starting to compete in the enthusiast space. They're starting to compete in the server space. And I think when Zen two drops. Intel doesn't have an answer for at least three years. Yeah. Uh, I, I am curious of their contracts for consumer market mm -hmm. stuff. Of I wonder if a Intel is banking possibly on something like that just to keep them afloat. Uh, who knows, you know, but this will be interesting. Were you going to say an epic hit? I should have. <laughs> I totally should have said. An epic hit. Yeah. Uh, Threadripper systems should be good for ESXi uh, systems, though. They absolutely should be amazing for virtualization loads. In fact, they'll probably scale a little bit better than Intel because yeah. Intel still suffers from Meltdown and Spectre uh, disabilities, which hampers them on the virtualization side, whereas AMD was not as affected. Mm. And in fact, Zen Plus is not affected at all by, by Spectre and Meltdown, if I remember correctly. So, uh, yeah, that Der Bauer OC was hilarious. Um, I need to show you this video when we're all done uh, with the show. Um, it was uh, Der Bauer cool, liquid cooled a 2U dual CPU Epic server with an inert liquid 
<laughs> and just had the stock fans, which are the, the giant ass blower oh, yeah. fans, shooting liquid like a jet ski over the top of these CPUs. Oh, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Um, three years, can't see them waiting that long to drop the next series of i9s. The problem is the next series of i9s is based on the current series of i9s, which is based off the last yeah. generation version of the i7s. Sevens. Yeah, no, it, all, all they're doing is they're fracturing their CPU line. They're taking away hyper-threading from the i7s and calling it an i9 and telling you, yeah, here's your lunch, go enjoy. Yeah, no, Intel needs a whole brand new redesign. Their architecture does not scale down any further than it does today. Yeah. Ten, uh, 14 nanometer is their max. They cannot get below that. Uh, their yields are not good enough. No. And even if they got it to 10 nanometer, I still don't think they would beat AMD. No, AMD I'm has an architecture that is scalable and that is shrinkable. Like And, and like I said, all Intel's done is taken that 45 nanometer in the Halo architecture replaced the DDR3 with a DDR4 controller and shrunken it down to 14. The problem is they're running into a factor of scale. They cannot get it any smaller. They cannot get it any more efficient. Yeah, no, I'm betting they knew that this was going to happen. They, I don't think they were banging on AMD and coming out with something like that. I this. don't think they knew this was going to happen. No. I, I don't think they did. I think they said, we'll ride this pony for as long as it goes, but I thought they were expecting to get at least two more fab processes out of it. I think they were... They should have been on 10 nanometer in 2015. That was the crossover date that mm -hmm. they projected back in 2011 for we're going to cross 10 nanometer in 2015. And in 2015, the chips came out and they were still at 14. And then 2016 came out and the chips were still at 14. And then there was rumors of delays and, and fab problems. And then all of a sudden, 2017, and they confirmed that there were delays with their 10 nanometer fabs. They were having problems with them. We're almost all the way through 2018. They're still having problems with, with, eight nanom or mm. with 10 nanometer fabs. They have an i3 mobile chip that's on the market right now that you can get in 10 nanometer, and that's the only viable processor they're getting off those fabs. <laughs> so they cannot scale down this architecture any further to make it any more efficient, yeah. which means it's a dead architecture. They've ridden this pony as long as it'll go. So, And and if you look at AMD's history, now Intel has way more R&D dollars than, 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 uh, than AMD does. Oh. Intel has way more dollars than AMD does. Uh, it took AMD five years to reboot from FX to Ryzen. It took them five years. Yeah. But they didn't. They didn't come out with a single product in five years, and then they drop Ryzen because they spent five years in the lab figuring out if this was going to be a scalable technology, and it is. Yeah. They Intel. Bet, they bet big and they scored. Right. Intel is going to be doing the same thing. Now they're going to be faster at it because they got more they have way more capital to waste. Way more capital, way more intelligent people. They just hired Jim Keller away from yeah. AMD who was the architect of Ryzen. Yeah. He he's the brainchild behind it. So, he's basically being brought on to Intel to say how do we scale? How do we glue our processors together? How do, yeah, how do we do this? Uh here's double the amount of uh money, here's double the amount of accessible items to do. Mm -hmm. Basically, your your whole lab and everything, we've gotten it even bigger for you. So you better come right. up with an even better product. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's like the Shelby uh, for uh, Shelby Mustang or Shelby Cobra. Oh yeah, for it, uh, Ferrari or well, it's Carol Shelby being shopped around to various companies. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was. That's what yeah. I meant to say. Yeah. Um, Spectre still affects Ryzen, and he says I don't think it it affects it as much. Uh, you're right, it does affect it. However, as of Zen Plus on the Threadripper side, I don't believe it affects it. Whereas the upcoming 9900K, it still affects it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, virtualization is going to be better on the AMD side next year. They're going to pass Intel. Oh. And, and they're going to pass Intel top to bottom, not just value per dollar. They're going to pass Intel in performance and value per dollar because oh, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll sell them cheaper too. Oh, yeah. $1,000 so. cheap. Sorry, $900 cheap. Yep. All right. Um, That's all we have for tech. Yeah. Let's get into some gaming news. It? Yeah. That, um, those... So, Matt Hatter. Let's, let's talk hey, about we haven't really talked about this. Yeah. Really. We can do a little, a little quick. You know, uh, this just tastes like a standard double IPA. Uh, yeah. A little bit cloudy to me. Yeah. Northwest. I mean, like we said, it's all these beers seem to have really, Northwest. Really, because it, it, it tastes more New England to me. It, it tastes a little... It's got well. It's got that haze. You yeah. Can, all it, all three of these seemed unfiltered. I didn't see any clarity. No, th these are all unfiltered. Yeah. In fact, this one even says unfiltered, unpasteurized, unadulterated beer. That's not the wrong. Well, where hazy technically has a wheat to it. Yeah. It, so an oat. Sorry, not wheat. Oat. 
where I don't think this has oat. But this, this one does. Oh, does it? So uh, like, what's funny is all three of these cans have ingredients, which I'm not used to seeing. No, I love that. Cans. I love that. Uh, water, malted barley, oats, hops, yeast, and that's it. Great, fantastic. So, oh, and it contains gluten. <laughs> there was there's a couple of them um, that I've seen. It's like oh, um, vegan. <laughs> I was like, wait, mm -hmm. aren't, aren't all beers vegan? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, why do you have to state that you're vegan? All of these beers yeah. and ciders are vegan. It's, you got meat in this? What? Yep. Sorry, so. my phone's blowing up all of a sudden. <laughs> um, anyway, gaming hey. news. So, uh, Valve has been hard at work. Yes, they have. As of late. Um, so, I don't know if... if you all remember, I did a video on the current state of SteamOS, or as I like to call it, what could have been. Um, it was an interesting video. It, it was, and it's actually one of my most popular videos on the channel. Um, it was seriously interesting to read up on the history of SteamOS, what it was marketed as, and what it is today, um, and then really dive in and experience it. Because the UI has not evolved one bit from the original release of this. Um, they haven't done crap to it? They haven't done crap. They, they've up, they've done some security updates and they've brought a couple of new features, but the UI is still kind of junk. And for for and the original marketing for SteamOS was we want to compete in the living room space. We want someone to buy a gaming PC instead of an Xbox or a PlayStation and put it in the living room and game on a PC, but with a controller. That was the marketing for it. Okay. Um, and to some extent, they actually did pretty well with that. They they made the OS kind of a, a user friendly experience as mm -hmm. far as downloading and selecting and playing games. And the Steam controller, love it or hate it, is a decent controller. It's, oh, I, it's, I, I have one. It's okay. Right. It took it, a bit to be used. To it takes it. a bit to get used to. I will say for mouse controls, it's much more accurate than Your than, than using a joystick yeah. or something like that. Um, however, if I'm playing in front of a TV, I still prefer a joystick. Um, because if I'm playing in front I'm, of a TV, I'm, I'm still like, where's my wireless keyboard and mouse? Totally. I'm still that. Right, but, but we're, we're PC gamers. Yeah. I, I was trying to get in the mindset of what Steam was was marketing this to, and that yeah. was console gamers who were on the fence about play. buying a yeah. PC. Okay. That's what it was marketed to. It was it was marketed to take those players away, not add PC players to the yeah. TV space. And I think that's where a lot of miscommunication comes about. Um, however... I had problems with general PC usage on that because I feel if you're going to be a PC and you're going to compete in that space, I need to be able to pull up a web browser and, and, and browse something. Um, I need to be able to uh, install other applications. I need to be able to do modding support I need, yeah. outside of the Steam library because, of, again, if you're playing on a PC, I should be able to I want, mod. I, I want those right. extra features that the PC right. user loves. Right, and, and the thing is, on a PC, it's dead simple for a, a Windows user. Yeah. Linux is not Windows. Not uh, even the, close. The, the, the Debian core I was based off of is not Windows. No. Um, and I got a lot of hate for saying those things, for saying... Hey, the web browser is crap. Well, you're using a controller. Yeah, because that's how they intended it to be used. Yeah. You can't install mods because it's not intuitive. Well, installing mods... It's, it's so mod simple. You just control this and F that and star space that right. and enter. And, it's Linux. And, don't you know? And sudo make directory space... Da, 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 da. As soon as you open up the terminal window, you're alienating 90% of oh, yeah. users. How many Period. No, End I, of discussion. I want, I want install... Play. I want point click. I want Nexus mods. Yeah. That's the level of modding support that I want to call it adequate modding support. Yes, you can go into a game and you can code your own flipping mods. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about the average user wanting to install the vast ar array of Skyrim mods, which yep. half of the best ones available are only available on Nexus mods. And they have a great front end and you install the Nexus mod add-in and you say, I want to play Skyrim and Borderlands and Fallout 4. And then you select your mods, you download it, and it installs it for you. There's no such thing as easy mod support and easy software installation on Linux. No. For the average user. Again, as soon as you open up Terminal, and as soon as you start talking any kind of computer gobbledygook, you're alienating 90% of users because yeah. they don't give a crap. Nope. They don't care enough to install that. You say the word that. backslash? Yeah. Done. Exactly. Well, forward slash. Well, sorry, whatever. I'm gonna get crap for that one. <laughs> forward slash. Forward slash. Um. So, so again, th those were my points. Um, 
the point that the users brought up, I said, would you switch to an OS knowing the problems that it has? And I actually got more people saying, yes, I would switch if they had game support, if they had all of my local games supported. Well, and, and, and I also got hate because, well, I can play all those games online. Again, unless I can click install and then click play and be in the game, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You, you have to get over yourself. You have to get over your own prejudices and your own insecurity and your own whatever, uh, your own ego. Oh, I know Linux. I can totally do that. Mm -hmm. You have to get over yourself and realize what the average person wants to do. And the average person wants to sit down and play a freaking game. Yeah, the consumer. Right. Half the time when you have a console or something like that, right. it's going to be you're playing these advanced games or a PC, mm -hmm. but then you have your nephew, your cousin, someone else. Mm -hmm. How do you come over? I want to play that cool Minecraft mod or Cyber mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, for slash C directory. Oh, God, the early you. days of installing computer craft inside of Minecraft so I could oh. have a computer network inside yeah. of Minecraft. It's which, just... by the way, was freaking awesome. But still, <laughs> it's my, my nieces and nephews. And ran Lua OS. <laughs> <laughs> my nieces and nephews, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're little kids, you know, four, mm -hmm. four to 13. And, mm -hmm. But yeah, they're all Minecrafters still. And, right. But yeah, half the time they come over or my, my parents' house. They just want to play Minecraft, and we have little crappy computers set up for them. Yep. But if it was Linux, and I want to play this mod, and I want to play that yep. mod, no, it's it's a bit more, uh, I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. So, but... But, uh, the, the vast majority of comments said, if my games were supported, and if I was able to click install and click play, I would switch. Yes. And by the way, after my video went live, less than a week later, Steam pulled the SteamOS tab off their main page which was very interesting which was very interesting yeah we, we all were like what is craft computing actually making a difference by the way depending on who you are and and what your google cookies say um if you search steam os on google i'm either the first or second oh, result I, and sometimes i beat out the steam os home page yeah no I, I i did that and you came up but that's because i'm always yeah but so, yeah you were the first one so my was. seo was on point um anyway so valve is actually working on an integration feature to play non-native games inside of SteamOS. Yep. The way they're planning on doing that is not the way that most people suggested, which was using Wine or some other variant of, of Windows emulation. It sounds like Steam may be building their own. Um, whether it's based on Wine, I don't know. But they're calling it Steam Play. And there were a couple service tags that were pulled out of the, the most recent code for SteamOS, mm -hmm. the, the most recent beta. Um, and they're basically messages. Uh, one of them reads, Steam Play will automatically install compatibility tools that allow you to play games from your library that were built for other operating systems. We don't know if that means mobile. Probably not, because there's no native no, there's no neat, Android there's, OS or no. iOS games. Um and there was also another message um, that uh, it described another tool that explains that users will be able to select a compatibility tool for use with games that have not been specifically tested on their specific platform, which often refers to Windows games that don't specifically include Linux support. So if you're talking about the original Borderlands, not Borderlands 2, Borderlands 2 can be played on, played on Linux. Borderlands 1 cannot. Mm -hmm. However, Borderlands 1 can be played within Wine with a compatibility layer, hmm. which is basically a DirectX compatibility layer, transfers it open over to OpenGL, Open3D, or Vulkan. Yeah. Um, and, and there's also a Vulkan compatibility layer that you can play DX11 games on Vulkan and run those on Linux. Um, so whether or not they're using wine, they're using something. And or if they're gonna something. Call it beer. Right. And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Steam Spirit. <laughs> uh, you yeah. heard it here first in Craft Computing, trademark Craft Computing beer. That's right. <laughs> so S Valve is working on something that is going to allow you to play Windows games on Linux. Yep. Um, which was really my Achilles heel of SteamOS. I can get around the web browser. I can hook up a keyboard and mouse and I can browse the web that way, even though the web browser sucks. Um, I can get around some other features, but again, if I'm going to have a computer, I, I expect computer level performance on certain things. Yeah. I want a web browser. I want file access. I want a desktop. I want to be able to install other apps. And more importantly, I want to be able to play my windows games natively. Sounds this, like it might there that kind of going that right. way. 
And I don't know if I had a hand in this. All I know is I have the most popular SteamOS video on, on YouTube of all time. You know what? Maybe if they have it, and be like, Jeff, can you review this for us? Right. <laughs> I, I actually considered contacting them and saying, hey, dude, I'm totally on board for a beta. <laughs> <laughs> Even behind, I'll drive up to Seattle and, and try it out. I don't care. Or I just want to see it, it later. Right. So. So I'm close enough. I, I'd love to sit in a room with an engineer and talk about the the problems that I laid out. Yeah. How are you going to solve those? I'd love to listen do that. to the people that buy, would want to buy this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I'll bring the beer. <laughs> or the spirit. Mm -hmm. Either one. It's fine. So. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of was saying this, that I'm not a big gamer. Mm -hmm. uh, or I, I used to be kind of like, a, I, I love playing shooters. I uh, still am. I used to be too. Yeah, I I was what I, I like to refer to as a seasonal gamer. Uh, one game came out, mm -hmm. and I'd like play the crap out of that mm -hmm. game. You know, uh, multiplayer games, battle, a lot, a lot of battlefields, Call of Duties. I played the crap out of it for like six, seven months. And then I was done for, mm -hmm. for three, four months. And then uh, the next one came out. But the one thing I've always loved was like classic retro games. And you, you even did a video on like, uh, it was the Game Boy, I think. The, yeah. you, you got like a Wish yeah. thing. But you, how was crappy, crappy ones. But I've always loved classic games. We even talked about like Nintendo a while ago, how like the uh, original Wii mm -hmm. had like these channels and everything like that. And we complained about it. I don't know if they paid attention to us or what's going on. Honestly, craft computing is changing the marketplace. It's, it's, it is. It is really changing. Because the Nintendo Switch is actually coming up with actually things I think is kind of brilliant. Yeah. Is a is a subscription base, which we we talked about. Which we talked about. We talked about. Uh, for right now it's it's twenty bucks a year, which is actually cheap. Mm -hmm. Uh ends up being like four bucks a month. Um for an NES right now it's right now it's only mm -hmm. NES. Yeah, classic NES classic games that will be available online. Online. Plus additional Wii, uh, uh, no, uh, sorry, not Switch uh, games and mm -hmm. support. Um, right now, there, there's only talk of NES games, but there's they're saying right now they're going to launch 20 NES games mm -hmm. with further to come. Your price will not increase during that time. Yeah. Um, there's no mention yet of SNES, uh, Sega Genesis, N64, N64, or any of that stuff. But this does if I think GameCube. <laughs> GameCube, um, or even just the original Wii. Yeah, uh, there are some really fun games on that. Um, but I love the subscription based. Uh, they're even doing a couple different ways of, hey, you only want three months of this, eight bucks. Yeah, I was like, that's uh, four, you know, four dollars on a monthly basis, eight dollars for three months, or twenty dollars a year. Year, a year. Yeah, a year. You know, I mean, if 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 a friend came over, like, oh, I want to play this classic game, or like I said, my nephews and nieces came over, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, you, I'm going to show you the original Mario, original Metroid, or mm -hmm. Mario, or let's play all the classic games. Mm -hmm. Four bucks. Yeah, I'll do that, and I have access to twenty plus games, yep. or or whatever the library at the time will be. Yep. Can I play devil's advocate here? All right, go ahead. So I'm I'm gonna take a contrarian standpoint to this. That's fine. I think Nintendo's being greedy as f. Really? I think they are. Okay. Here, here's my problem. I emulated the Super Nintendo on my PC at full 30 FPS mm -hmm. with graphical enhancements that were not available on the SNES at the time in 1994. Yeah. I had the compute. I had the power, and I had the internet. And I had people who were willing to rom dump, and I had, and I had, the will to go find them. Yeah. Okay. So that technology has been around for twenty four oh, years. Oh yeah. Now for the SNES, before it, it was available for the NES back in nineteen ninety one. Yeah. People started figuring out how to do that on four eighty six machines. Um, here's the problem. Okay. A simple Google search, and I can download Nintendo's entire library for free and play it. With graphical enhancements on any device yeah, I want. I, I get On yeah. any device that I, I want. I get that. You're saying for $20 a year, I get 20 NES games. No. no. With, with more to come, sure. More to come. But they, they actually put some I, enhancements in this. I, I will say maybe, maybe not. I have 435 NES games in my personal library. You know what, though? But there are, there are some enhancements that they did to these games. There's mm -hmm. multiplayer online capability mm -hmm. that you can play these games with your friends now online. I can play those games with my friends, too. I can play NetPlay on any on any emulator that's on these the... These are uh, also legal. Right. They're also <laughs> legal. Here's the problem, and, it, and it's the same thing that bit the music industry in the ass, is when a technology exceeds your revenue stream, 
when it, when the technology is so much easier to achieve than your revenue stream makes it. When I have to own a Nintendo Switch and pay your subscription yeah. service and only play these 20 games and whatnot, and I go, God, I wish I, I had Tetris 2. Man, I wish I had Wario's Woods. Man, I wish I had this or that. I then go, well, can I play Wario's Woods today? Oh, look, I can play Wario's Woods and every other Nintendo game <laughs> under the sun for absolute free on any device that's ever been made by man. That's true. But, but again, too, like you're saying... I'm not to, saying this isn't going to sell. To the cons- I'm saying, Nintendo, why is it only 20 games? Well, it's to start, and I think that's to start with. What's what's the, the, the problem? The, the NES. I what's think, stopping? I them? think the them doing the NES was crap. They should do for twenty bucks a year all the whole library of the NES. That should have been yes. Easy. That should have been. Easy. That's my point. And, and that I, that I'll agree for, to that. For twenty dollars a year, if you if you unlock but the entire NES library, and that's what's required for the base subscription. If you say you have to buy the NES library for twenty dollars a year, I'll pay it. And I've been doing this crap for free for 24 years. Yes. I will pay it. I, well, I think this is better than this last subscription base or paying of the uh, Wii and Wii U where you had to buy it per game. The right. individual game. Well, it's like, even if it was 99 cents, that, that was a ripoff. Right. That was a complete ripoff for one game because I, it wasn't I compatibility. Think, I don't think at 99 cents for an individual game that you own for life is, is, a, is a bad deal for any game. Well, but the problem is when they were charging $5 for the original Zelda. Yeah. The original Zelda today it does not stack up to a $5 game. No. It's nostalgia. Now, they're not stating that there's nowhere in this article, again, this is really fresh, but this subscription base, by the way, will be coming out this month. Mm -hmm. At middle of September, Mm -hmm. this will launch. Uh, But it is only launching with 20 games. They haven't said that it's not going to go into, uh, that that $20 will not include the NES or other additional titles. Mm -hmm. So it could could include the NES, the Sega Genesis. Mm-hmm. It could do that. It probably won't. Right. It's probably going to be the base tier package. It's right. probably going to, you know. Um, but but here's my problem. You're paying $20 for 20 games, and that's fine. Or $20 for 50 games. Let's say they expand it to 50 mm-hmm. by December. Let's just say. Okay? I still have the entire library that I downloaded for free, and it took me less time to sign up for this. Yes, that's true. But, okay, that, how many people listen to Pandora and uh, all those other streaming oh, services? Oh, I absolutely have Pandora, even though I have a Plex server. Exactly. Um, and, and I pay the three ninety nine a month for Pandora. I do pay that. And you could but the download, pl- and you had that technology since the right. early 90s, right. and you're still doing it. I still did. That, that is a great counterpoint. I will say that's absolutely a great counterpoint. My problem is the market. The market that they're shooting for is more of an enthusiast and nostalgic market. It is. And if I go on Craigslist and I shop SNES Classic, I get three SNES Classics at an obscene markup. And then a bunch of homebrews. And I get 20 SNES cases with Raspberry Pis in them with RetroPie that they're selling me for half the price oh, yeah. with two controllers with every game that Nintendo's ever made. Oh, yeah. You know, well, the thing is, though, that that's what bugs me about these whole, like, the NES Classic, the Super NES thing that came in. And now this one, the Sega Genesis mm-hmm. announces their Mega Drive Mini. At least 15 At classic least, games. Oh. This is what is stopping you from doing the whole library no stop? Yeah. There's nothing stopping no. you. Uh, other than... This is completely licensed. Right. That's it. I totally understand that. But how many... Let's go to Nintendo. Let's let's keep the focus on Nintendo because yeah. Nintendo's the one waging the war. Yeah. Nintendo's the one waging the war against piracy, against emulation, against... Game, they're the Metallica uh, of Against the game gaming. preservation. Uh, they're more the Nickelback of... Uh, <laughs> Nickelback didn't care. Metallica was the one that was the whole Okay, Napster okay, thing. okay. From, from that perspective, yes. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, Metallica was the anti-Napster. Yeah. yeah. Nickelback's just like, someone's listening to our songs? <laughs> Don't talk bad about my wife. It got my <laughs> wife. Nickelback got me a wife. That's right. <laughs> Chad Kerger, everyone. Um, but let's keep the focus on Nintendo for a second. Um, what is stopping them from releasing their entire library for $20 a year? Nothing. Nothing. It no, doesn't I, cost them a freaking dime, and to say otherwise is obscene no, and, because, and unintelligent. Yes, it is. Well, there's intelligence in that they saw that the per game industry was not going to work. The NES Classic came with forty. Yeah, that was still well. It the, was the, the, the box but, I can buy off the shelf. Okay, out of out of those 
80 to 120 NES games. How many of those were actually good, though? Like 12. Exactly. Maybe. Exactly. Well, that's why you say, ah, there's 40. Okay, there's enough of, you're probably going to get those 12. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of people that, I really love that one little niche game. Right. That's it. That's why, because they don't need to release all of them. Because who knows? They might not even own the rights to all of them anymore. And I, and I, and I, and I totally see that. But I guarantee they have rights to like 180 of them. Probably, but then they're let's, like... Let's say 50% oh. of the library. And the thing is, every single game on that console is licensed by Nintendo. So if the company goes extinct, my thought is that the licenses still are owned by Nintendo. They can still market and sell those licenses. They might be thinking, we might come up with a Gen 2. Right. So. But, but, but again, my point is, 20 games... Yeah. That's a slap in the face. Oh, yeah. oh no. I, I have people that work in my office. They're like, they were on Amazon and eBay trying to buy this up for like one ninety nine. I went to them with a Raspberry Pi before your video. I was uh -huh. like, every game you ever wanted, plus Super Nintendo, plus Sega Genesis, plus mm -hmm. everything else. Heck, the program I even built, there's a secret ROM in it if you type the right words. Right. <laughs> you can play PlayStation on this bitch. Yeah, exactly. Right. Everyone's always asking, how do I get there? It's like, you have to figure it out. But right. I, I, I was even there this morning. I was like, it's playing nice. it. Uh, Zach, if you're watching, I was actually doing work, by the way. Yep. That's right. <laughs> totally. He works He works harder than I, anyone you employ. That's right. I totally do. Totally does. Um, what a weird phrase. Nickelback gave me my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but again, 20 games is a slap in the face. It's an absolute slap in the face. And Nintendo's not going to listen to me. They're not going to listen to anyone because they do what they want. They do. Well, but, but my problem is this is not going to change anything. This is not going to change people emulating games. This is not going to change downloads. This is not going to change ROM sites popping up. This is not going to oh. change anything. This is going to allow Switch users to play NES, 20 different NES games for $20 a year. It's another revenue stream for Nintendo, yada, yada. It, it's fan service and nothing else. This is not a full-fledged gaming service a la Netflix because we talked about Nintendo possibly creating a Netflix-like service where you subscribe to it for... And honestly, $20 a year is less than I thought it was going to be. Well, no, but that well, that's what I think that they're going for. Now, it, if it was still 20 bucks a year and then they just continued to grow up, but the base price stayed the mm -hmm. same and and then you got the NES and the Sega Genesis and the additional... Because there's, there's the online playability right. and chat now they're doing the let's, let's just say let's just say first party games let's just say first party nintendo from nes to n64 which is totally possible on switch hardware in fact i have it on good authority that you can play gamecube games on switch hardware. yeah uh, you can emulate gamecube games at 30 fps on switch hardware yeah. you could be playing wind waker right now but nintendo's not letting you and quite honestly i'd be perfectly fine with like 70 dollars a year if I got Nintendo's entire first-party library for the Switch for $70 a year, not including Switch games. Yeah. You you get me all of their handhelds and all of their consoles up to the N64 and, and possibly GameCube, I'd I, be fine with like 70 bucks a year. Yeah. I, I'd pay it willingly. And yeah. and I already emulate this crap. I already have this crap on my computer. But if I but, but it on the Switch... Fact, yeah, but it's the fact that I have the Switch and the great part about the Switch, if they did that, is the portability of right. the Switch. Absolutely. It is a, it is a great tool, I think... That's what I really loved about that particular product. It may not be the beefiest mm -hmm. of things, but I loved the fact that they're like, look, our, our community is now mm -hmm. mobile. Right. Let's go with that. And, and the thing is, people go, oh, emulation is difficult. Not when you own the source code to the original console. Mm -mm. Every single emulator that's ever been built is reverse engineered. If you own the source code, you can, you you can, can port it to any freaking yeah. thing you want. Yeah. Exactly, it's super easy. I... Right, the 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 N sixty four was a was a seventy megahertz console. The GameCube was a three hundred and twelve. The the yeah. the Switch is a Tegra two quad this core is, four. This is two gigahertz. probably more powerful than the Switch. It absolutely is. I have a Snapdragon eight thirty five. Yeah, it's, it's about. It, it is more powerful than the Switch because the Switch is the Tegra two. Yeah, we know what's in the Switch. We know the power that's there. It's a slap in the face. This is a slap in the face. Although, did you did you see? Was it? I think it was Sega. I the, get ranty when I have three beers. Yeah, it was the the <laughs> one thing you know. Kind of kind of going back to the by the way, 29th anniversary of the Sega Genesis. Yeah, They're releasing right. us a, yeah, a Sega uh, Mini. A Mini with 15 classic games. Uh, uh, two 15 classic games. Two, oh, whatever. Or at least at sorry, least at least. Um, 
The one thing I just did, the ones we decide to release, because <laughs> we all want to play Sonic the Hedgehog again. again. Better freaking be Golden Axe Two on there. Ah, uh, who gets the? Sh- Actually, I love Golden Axe. Yeah, uh, don't you contradict me? On I want, that. I, I want Alter Beast. Right on my way. Um, <laughs> uh, Urban Assault. Oh uh, yeah. Um, no, the was, Ooh, was General the, Chaos. Okay, you, but I always hated the Sega controller. The three buttons. Button. Three buttons didn't didn't jump. No, for me. Um, you're, you're right. But uh, the the very last paragraph. Of them saying that there's recent licensing out to iOS and Android phones. Mm-hmm. That I was actually very intrigued about. Yep. Uh, of them, they're going to do that, including Sonic the Hedgehog. All the classic, will, the original, like you're saying, source code, will be put onto your phones now. Right. I'm not a big fan of the touchscreen controllers, but uh, I, I did like the fact that, you know, there might be some actual mobile classic gamings that are not emulated. Are you alive? I was going to say, like, is it alive? No. The spammer's back. Yeah. So, uh, good job, mod. Uh, I, I recently uh, contracted a, a mod to keep track of our chat and ban people that he sees fit. So, he saw one fit. Oh, who, I wanted to, what happened? Where is it? Uh, Can we scroll? Oh, Gamer okay. gods, yeah, M yeah, live, yeah, M yeah, live, yeah, yeah. M live. The spanner is back. M live, M live. Johnny Five. <laughs> uh, Jeff, what phone do I have? I have the uh, essential phone, the PH one. And uh, so far, I really like it. There's a couple things I dislike about it. Um, did you do a review on it? I haven't done a review on it. I thought you did. A I was wanting to do one. I was wanting to use it for a little bit longer. Mm. Um, You've used it for so, months uh, now. Yeah, I've 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 had the phone about gosh, almost two months. Yeah, yeah. they're about. Um, doesn't have a headphone jack, and I actually ran into an issue with that where um, I usually carry a set of Bluetooth earbuds with me when I'm traveling, and I also carry a set of wired headphones when I'm traveling. And up to this point, every phone that I've ever had had a set of wired headphones. Yeah. Well, um, my wired headphones are far more comfortable than my Bluetooth headphones, and in the airport, I was getting a little tired, and I'm like, I'm just going to doze off here until my plane uh, is ready to board. I've got like an hour and a half before the plane boards. You just drank a beer. Right. I totally was. <laughs> like at five in the morning. I guess that one. Um... So uh, I went, okay, I'm, I'm a little tired. My head kind of hurts. I just want to take a nap. I'm just going to plug in my headphones so I don't drain my Bluetooth battery. And God, I, I, I didn't have a headphone jack. Where's my dongle? <laughs> um, so, and I didn't have the dongle with me. It's here. Um, so I went, okay, I'll just use Bluetooth ones. And, and the Bluetooth ones worked fine. They, they were okay. Um, the position of the power button is actually way too low. That's like mid it, area. It's, it's in the center of the phone. Um, it's it's right here. Basically, so, that's like where all of the clamps of a lot of things would go. Right. So that's every single clamp that I have. So if I put it in my in my, uh, vertical, my holder in yeah. my car, my vertical holder, I have to lift the phone up to hit the power button, and then the thumbprint thing is on the back to unlock it, and then and then I push it back down. <laughs> um, so that's kind of a pain. Um, and there's a couple other like nitpicky things that you'd only get from like using the phone a lot. Yeah. Other than that, the the hardware's fantastic, and I and I love the software on it too. So that's it's worked very well. Mm. Um, but yeah, Essential Phone 1. Yeah. I'll probably be getting the, the Essential Phone 2 as soon as it comes out, too. Because I, I like the phone that much. Um, I, I want the Essential Phone 2 to have a little bit better camera. This one's okay. It's serviceable. It's a decent camera. It's not a good camera. Mm. Or It's not an excellent camera, should I say. Mm. So if I'm comparing it to an iPhone 8 or an iPhone X or a Pixel or, or an LG, whatever the, the really nice LG one was, or a Galaxy 9, it falls behind those cameras. Okay. Um, it, it's still better than the budget Android phones, but it's not a premium Android phone yeah. for a camera. Everything else about this is premium, and I like it. You want to get into Q and A of all? Or? We can do a little Q and A. We got we got some a little bit of time, right? Yeah, we got 10, 15, 20 minutes somewhere yeah. right in there. Right in there. So Q and A. Anyone want to chat about anything? Everyone who loves physical keyboards should get the BlackBerry Two. Not according to Linus, and you should watch Linus's video if you're interested in that because. The physical keyboard is not as good as it used to be, and touchscreen keyboards are far better than they used to be. And yeah, I'll let you watch him. And oh. I fully and I fully agree with everything that he said. It was very funny. You were, we were, when we were talking about the Steam and the the controller. I was actually almost thinking, you know, it'd be great is if they had like a flip out screen with a swipe keyboard on it. Yep, that would be fantastic. That would make internet yep. browsing and everything so much easier. Is it better than a Pixel XL with an unlocked bootloader? Um, 
I would say it's on par. It's a Snapdragon 835, so it's a very fast phone. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM. It's got 64 gigs of storage, or 128 gigs of storage. Excuse oh, wow. Me. Um, and the phone is... Expandable? Five, SD card? No SD card, but mm. 128 gigs. I, I, I'd load it fast, though. Right. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> How are the chairs? How are the chairs? Why do they call it a pair of pants when it's only one? <laughs> How are the chairs? It's, it's uh, per leg. Yeah. So Gamdius. You'll reach, see it tomorrow. You'll see you'll see the video tomorrow. I have an unboxing and early impressions video of these chairs, but we'll get into it in the live stream. Um, I love the chairs. How do you, how do you think feel about the chairs? Yeah. So okay. Uh, I, when I first got here, before we went live, I said they were a little stiff. Um, and I, and you said you wouldn't be comfortable sitting in it for two hours. Yeah. And you know what? It's it's not bad. It's it's. Oh, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It really is. Well, you know what I really love is that there's so much adjustability on yes. these things that it almost makes you want to just play with it. Yeah. Constantly. I yep. mean, I, I've been doing this. Whoa. That, yeah, oh, it goes further, back. That goes way further yeah. back than I See, I, I have mine locked for the show, but, dude, I could freaking sleep in this you, chair. It almost goes completely, like, flat. And there's the thumbnail. <laughs> so no no this is the gandy's achilles m1l um so far i really really enjoy the chair yeah it, um it's, it really does it hugs you it, it's a little stiff for me but it hugs you so much that it's nice it's stiff but it provides a lot of support yeah and and uh we're coming from a, a really bad place for chairs, so it's really hard to compare it to what we had to what we have now. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, we had basically, or at least I did. I had to sit on basically a I stool. sat on the same chair because it fit. <laughs> um, hey, Jeff, you want to do a Windows update right now? No. <laughs> Another time, perhaps. <laughs> uh, Jeff, I should live stream the RTX announcement. I will be at work. During the RTX announcement, I will be watching it though. Um, have you seen the, Nor the, the new Rock 64 with PCIe X4 Craft Computing? I have not. I'll have to Google that. Um, trying to decide what I want to get when I replace my Lumia 640. Ooh, ouch, bro. Yeah, you definitely want to replace that. Um, no, was it specified that Nintendo was only going after ROM sites or against browser-based emulators? Both. Both, yeah. The, where, where Love Roms and Love Retro went wrong was he bragged about how successful he was. Yeah. Uh, he had numbers that was posted publicly that Nintendo said, Oh, yeah, yeah, every single one of those numbers you posted, that's a direct loss from Nintendo, which, number one, is bull. Um, the, the copyright law does not equate to a sale or a theft. Um, and technically, a theft can only be four times the judgment of... Or a judgment can only be four times the amount of the theft. So if you steal $250, you can get $1,250 back. That's how, mm, that's yeah. how that judgment works. Uh, or $1,000 back, excuse me. So $250 gets you $1,000. One viewing of intellectual property on a website does not equate to $1 million or $2 million in lost Nintendo. Sorry. It doesn't, those numbers don't work that way. Mm. Although if you're Disney, apparently they do. And Disney's the one that keeps upping that copyright violation. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, uh, can I do some SPC videos in the future? I've thought about doing some, S some SPC videos. Um, I really want to get a couple of the, the AMD V1000 uh, SPCs, the system on chip uh, Ryzen systems. Um, I have a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis and I dink around with them, but I'm not an authority on them. And that's why I haven't done anything thus far. I did the one video with the, the emulation retro. system, yeah. the, the retro emulation system. Um, I... I, I administrate Linux professionally, uh, but I'm, I'm not necessarily a Linux guru, uh, I would say. I, I know my way around it, and I can do some basic things. Uh, but the SBCs, a lot of times you get into the hardware manipulation, and I am not an electronics engineer. I, I, I suck with Arduinos. I suck hard with Arduinos. Um, so I don't know that I'm really the, the source you want to see for SBC stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, not that I'm not interested in it, and I don't own, like, 20 of them. Oh, yeah, no, I it, literally own, like, it, 20 it, SPCs. He had, like, when I first met Jeff, he had a server room of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, at, at work on my desk, I have a, a, a quad cluster of uh, Raspberry Pi 3s. Yeah. So, uh, so those desk chairs are like racing seats in a car. They're designed similar. Uh, yeah. they're, they're wider than that. They're built for gamers, not for drivers. <laughs> Shall I say? <laughs> yeah. A little girthier than, than I'd prefer. Uh, bathroom, mom. Bathroom. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm giving you nightmares doing that. What? I think it's the lying back. I don't know. No, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm assuming. I uh, hope I bought four of them for next the, for the next anniversary vid. <laughs> well, he didn't buy any of these. I asked, though, when he got these, I was like, oh, so do we get to take these home? He's like, oh, no, they're just for the studio. Like, oh, yeah. You didn't ask hard enough. Yeah. John, it's my first dealing with this company. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. Uh, there was, hi there, what, uh, what about free NAS tutorials? If you use any, if you use it, you you, you already did a free NAS. I've, I've done free NAS I think I think he's asking, uh, what about free NAS tutorial if you use it? Um, I do have some videos coming up, hopefully late this month or early September, uh, with a couple more free NAS tutorials. One of them is going to be a review of the free NAS Mini, uh, which is their pre... Uh, configured free NAS that you can oh, just yes, that, buy at retail. Yeah. Um, so if you're afraid of building your own server, not sure what to do, you can buy one of their servers for starting at like nine hundred dollars. And I'm assuming and the other video is how to fix a free NAS, right? No, the other video, uh, <laughs> I, I've got two different options that I'm looking at right now. One of which I've been playing around with for a little while, and uh, and that is well, one of my know I'm going to do for sure, and that's doing a whole home backup system. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do I back up all of my computers to a central location and not have to worry about centralized data and that kind mm. of thing? Um, and make sure that if this computer dies or this SSD dies, that that data is safe. That's that's video number one. Um, video number two is going to be, okay, so I subscribe to a VPN, but I don't want to configure the VPN on every single device that I have. Or maybe they don't make a client for the v for the that device VPN, that I have. Yeah. So I want my Roku to go through a VPN because I use X, XSBC or X, XB... XBCD or gosh. whatever it's called. XBMC. There we go. Xbox Media Center. And I use XBMC and I don't want people knowing that I do that online and I want that draft to be hidden or I torrent from there or I use popcorn TV or whatever the mm. case may be. Um, and, and I want to and I want to hide that that info. Um, I have a method of creating an Ubuntu gateway that connects to your VPN. That all you have to do is set your default gateway to that server and it will route you through your VPN. Oh, it, it's the same as being connected directly to your VPN and you still have local network traffic access. Oh, see, Whereas makes... right now, if I connect to like NordVPN via my smartphone, my smartphone connects to the VPN, but then I don't have local network access. Yeah. I can't stream to a Chromecast device if I'm connected to a VPN. Yeah, see, I'm interested in that. Right. Uh, so I'm still working on getting it to what I would consider like consumer facing ready, where I'm willing to put it in a video and everyone use it mm -hmm. because it's a little... It works once it's up, but it does require some networking knowledge. Mm. Um, and, and I'm trying to get it accessible to everyone. Uh, you, so. you can you can set it up in my house and film there. Yeah, so so that one's a maybe. I, I have it working here, and I'll show you it working out okay. of the show. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that that's an option. Um, have you seen the GameCube Wii emulator for Android? I have. Um, uh, Dolphin 5, yes, I have seen that. Um, based on current info, what's a wild guess for what the CPU market will be like this time next year? It will be flipped completely on its head. Right now, it's about 30% rise and 70% Intel. I believe it will be 70% rise and 30% Intel. As far as the consumer space goes. I think server space may be even higher than that. That's my gut feeling, is that AMD is going to kick the absolute living crap out of Intel because Intel doesn't have anything left. Even, yeah, it's much more comfortable sitting there. So. Wow. Yeah, I got used to it. Uh, buy a Fortinet, Forta Wi-Fi, VPNs everywhere, and you can absolutely do that as well. Uh, also, if you use a... Uh, uh, oh, gosh. PFSense firewall, you can use OpenVPN <laughs> and route all your traffic through your OpenVPN and shoot all your traffic through there. But the point of using a VPN gateway in your network is like my streaming PC. I don't do anything on this PC that I wouldn't want prying eyes to see. I stream to the internet and I want full service. I want my gig down 30 up. Yeah. Um, if I have services that I don't necessarily want prying eyes to see, then I can send that service through a VPN. Um, and so if I have another PC or a laptop or I, I want to do... Uh, those I, are the chair, by the way, if you hear those noises. That's just the chair. Yeah, I'm still getting used to my position. <laughs> he's, he's not passing gas. Yep. Um... But uh, if, if I have a device that I want to route through a VPN, say I have a Roku TV and I want to watch Norwegian TV or BBC or something like yeah. that, and the app is only available over there, well, I can route my Roku through that, that gateway and get BBC um, or watch other countries broadcast or I can... All, all kinds of options. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's designed for... I don't want to necessarily configure the VPN on this device, but I want that device to go through that VPN sometimes. 
So that's the thought behind it. And again, I'm still working on how do I want to say that? How do I want to script it? How do I want to explain it? And does it actually freaking work all the time yeah. without fail? So what's one plus one? It's four. 11. Um, thoughts, thoughts on the Ubiquity Pro Summer products for access points. Uh, the latest access points are freaking awesome. Um, uh, we've got some of the ACHD points, which supposedly support up to 450 wireless devices per access point via, via 5 by Nemo, which is absolutely insane. Uh, you skipped over the best uh, question of I, I, me I, I, having a taco video coming out. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. I have a taco video coming out yep. on hops and brews. Watch for that. Anyways, back uh, to this. <laughs> Blackbird. Uh, he has a 2700X hitting 90C, which is a little toasty for that chip. You shouldn't, That's war. You shouldn't really be getting above 85 on that chip. So what cooler are you using? Um, although you're running at 1.3625 volts, I'd still be curious at what cooler you're using. Um, and maybe you just lost the silicon lottery. That happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your chip heats up too far. I'm surprised your you're. I'm surprised you're stable at 4.2 at 90 C. I, I honestly am. That's quite warm. Yeah. I mean that that's a heater you're running now. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, speaking of VPNs, what's your opinion on split tunneling? You could totally do that, and that's similar to what I was talking to with the gateway, where some of my traffic goes here, some of my traffic goes there. Yeah. Um, a lot of that is going to be rule defined within a firewall. And again, if you're in a PF Sense box, you can totally do something like that. What I'm talking about on the network is sending all of my traffic from this device through the VPN without configuring it on that device. Mm. So, uh, let's see. I like see. the swiveling on the chairs now. Yeah. I didn't get the swivel before. Now I'm like, uh, yeah, it's Jeff. <laughs> Ban John for advertising? No, yeah. Ban John for self promotion. <laughs> hey, some of my segments, segues are pretty good. But you were on point today, uh, yes. I will say. Yes. And you know what? It's two hours and five minutes. All right. Hops and brews. Check them out. What? <laughs> like that way. Yeah, that was good. Muting John for five minutes. <laughs> Banned. Uh, John's, here. So, John's here. John's here. John's here. John's here. John's here. So one thing I'm trying to do on Talking Heads is as the channel is, or as the show has evolved, it's gotten much more long-winded and much more... I'll say too long-winded and, it's got a, uh, and a little we've esoteric. Got, we've gotten off point way too many times. I, I've, I've, I'll, I'll say it's gotten a little esoteric. If, if you know me and if you know John and if you know Steven and you know Rhett, you know exactly what we're talking about. Well, we've gotten into way too many personal stories yeah. and, and whatnot. What I'm trying to do really starting today is kind of turn over a new leaf where we stay on our points. We actually have time limits for our stories, which we stayed to pretty well today. On point. Yeah. Even after a 15 minute late start, yeah, we stayed on point. Today. And it wasn't because I was late. Right. Um, so, <laughs> I was on time. So we're still going to do our off topic rants, but I'm trying to really limit those because yeah. we've done three hour shows where I still only did 70% of the topping points that I wanted to get to. Um, and, and so I, I want the shows to be much more topical, much more digestible for people who are coming to the channel to get their news. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of stage one of this process. Um, I haven't set up a timer yet. I'm looking at a, a feature to do auto timestamps. Um, but, it, so. but it's been pretty good, though. But this was a this very, very was, smooth show. Yeah. It wasn't a very heavy news week, though. It wasn't, but there were some there were some There were some there. big things, but that was the thing. It, it was It was just like two maybe three big things and that was it and that's real. we only hit like three big tech points yeah there, there were uh and, and what i'm trying to do is really get onto two or three good talking points and yeah. that's what the show is going to be about yeah uh i still uh basically what i'm doing is we get into the show for five minutes so we we talk about the week talk about what's going on that was my uh, isp stress, rant today yeah. That was my ISP rant today. Uh, we do 15 minutes of beer news. So we do two to three news articles that we can fit into 15 minutes. And we talk about those. And by the time those are done, we can open a second beer and we can get into tech news. And that worked perfectly today. Yep. And my tech news segments, I want to do two to three big news stories. And then a couple smaller ones. So, so two to five smaller news stories. So, hey, Sega unveiled the Genesis Mini and it's gonna be available starting in September for X price. With 15 games. M with 15 games, moving on. That's a news point. I don't need to spend a lot of time on it. And it was related to the Nintendo subscription service. Yeah. And it was related to this and it was related to that. So, 
trying to get more cohesive in our news telling, trying to get just more digestible yeah, for we're everyone. Yeah, trying to make things flow a yeah. lot easier. Yep. So. So, hope everyone enjoyed this show. I know I sure did. It is uh, 10.08 p.m., and I think I'm going to call yeah. that a pretty good night. Yeah. Uh, no cocktails tonight for No us. cocktails tonight. Yeah. Well. Well, on camera. Not on camera. We might, we might still do one. But. <laughs> so this has been episode 45 of Talking Heads. I never officially said that. We never say I was going to say like, and we never said that. I'm Jeff. I'm John. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. And I hope you have a fantastic evening. Or night. Or morning. Wherever you're watching. Wherever you're watching. Wherever you may be tonight. Today. Wherever this, the this hops morning. may lie. <laughs> have a good night, everyone. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>